under point 11, 11.1, um, it ends at 83, but then it says that in section A, A1 starts at 86. I think that was just a, a typo there. I will now allow for silent prayer or meditation. Thank you. Number item number three on our agenda, Rihanna. Good morning, Speaker, Executive Mayor, Deputy Executive Mayor, Whip of Council, and all other councillors present. Speaker, I can confirm that for your council meeting dated the 27th of July, 2022, at 11 o'clock, we have the following councillors present. In the chamber, Speaker, we have Councillor Swart, yourself, Councillor Wigbaard, Alderman Boyson, Councillor Malloy, Alderman Terblanche, Alderman Lilchaba, Councillor Ucker, Councillor Base, Councillor Seti, Councillor Ndai, Alderman Kritzinger, Councillor Cronier, Councillor Toto, Alderman Van Mieker, Alderman Gerke, Councillor Van Noordwijk, Councillor Taute, Councillor Steenka, Councillor Strubel, Councillor Twenga, Councillor Kannemeyer, Councillor Kaneri, Councillor Lambertine, Councillor Van Rooyen. Those are the councillors present in the chamber speaker. Via Zoom, we have Councillor Matika. Councillor Matika, just give us an indication. I don't see Councillor Matika anymore. It's only um, Councillor Reiters in Andy. Speaker, they definitely, I did sound checks with them. I'll just check with if they're excellent. Okay, we may proceed, then you can just do that for us. All the lady writers. Uh, President Rihanna. Thank you, all the lady. Speaker, I, I have to inform you that I did sound checks with Councillor Gungu Bele as well, and with Councillor Cornelius, and with Councillor Skippers, and they all confirmed that they could hear us. I don't know why they exited the meeting, Speaker. Um, speaker, I'm present. Councillor Cornelius. Thank you, Councillor. I also did a sound check with Councillor Gungu Bele. Councillor Gungu Bele, can just, you just give us an indication if you are in the meeting? Councillor Skippers, present speaker. Thank you, Councillor Skippers. We've noted you. Councillor Vanolia. We must just try and get her back, please, if she is not on the platform. Speaker, would you like for me to do the officials? Thank you. <clears throat> Speaker, in terms of our officials, we have the following present. Mr. Stratu, Ms. Holtzhausen, Mr. Clive Africa, Mr. Menzi, Mr. Jan Willem de Jager, Mr. John Daniels, Ms. Nadiva Davids, Mr. Timbani Lolliwe, Ms. Melanie Wilson, Ms. Pamela Lufele, Ms. Ilse Simon, myself, Onisele Desha, Karen Ann van Weingaard, and we also have officials present via Zoom speaker. We have Ms. Lauren James, Ms. Louise Hook, Mr. Tabello Mukuru, Mr. Kuis Nieveld, Those are the official speaker. Thank you very much, Rihanna. Rihanna, will you please just try to get out of those other councillors? Because I saw them, but now all of a sudden they are not. But in the meantime, we will proceed. And you can just give me an indication as soon as they have rejoined the meeting. Speaker, Councillor Mayron has also joined the meeting. 
Thank you, counselors. Um, counselors with leave, you have. Speaker, committee services only received a formal apology from Alderman de Fries. That is in terms of our councillor representation. I'm sure that uh, management will also inform us who is absent from the officials. Thank you. Um, MM. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Good morning, Executive uh, Mayor, Deputy and Councillors. Speaker, the official that is not here is the Secretary of Council, Advocate McCracken. He's on sick leave. And um, Mr. Paz Mutungi, the manager for properties and resorts, is attending the meeting in Cape Town. Those are the two uh, speakers that officially have submitted their applications for leave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emin. Um, Councillors, without leave at this stage, you can just give me an indication later. Later, please, speaker. Yes, Councillor Skippers, Councillor Hector, do you have an apology for Councillor Hector? Yes, Speaker. I just want to confirm that I speak to Councillor Hector. There's a crisis and we just want to apologize for this meeting. Thank you, Councillor Skipper. So there's an apology from Councillor Hector. Then I did see Alderman Gierke. I think he is here present. So Councillor Gierke is present. Okay, thank you. But I don't see him in the chamber now. So, councillors, we proceed with item number four. As we go along, Rihanna, please just indicate whether the other councillors joined us. Thank you. Noting of the provisions of Schedule 7, Code of Conduct for Councillors. Point number five, disclosure of interest by councillors and officials. Are there anything that you want to declare, councillors or officials? Um, councillor Tauti? Yeah, uh, speaker F2. I would like to strict pantry, food pantry. Okay. And perhaps you can say I can stay if, if it's possible. Uh, the soup kitchen there where I've got uh, I'm it's part of my work there in, in, in my ward. I do re did receive in the past some donations from them. Should okay. I declare it or? If you do, Mr. Mr. Klein. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'd just like to declare my interest in the item that's in committee. Thank you. MM, you may proceed. Thank you, Speaker. I wanted to do this when you were confirming your agenda. Actually, the item in which Mr. Africa has just declared has been withdrawn from the agenda. Thank you, Speaker. Okay, thank you. Uh, MM, can you just assist in the question from Councillor Tauti? He is declaring that the soup kitchen, that is one of his projects, are receiving on item number F2, he um, are receiving um, contributions from the food pantry. Um, he was just declaring that. I think it can be noted uh, the declaration. There's nothing wrong with it. Thank you. If there are no other councillors, then we will proceed. As I've mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, councillors, besides the the items C1, C2, and C3, we've also got long service awards um, for three of our staff members, but we will first start with C1. And C1 is the inauguration of PBI counselor um, to us to the garden route, and that is Councillor JP Base. Councillor Base, can you please? Okay, be be before you come, we will go to <coughs> item to page number of the recommendation. Let me just get the recommendation on the screen. The recommendation is on page 165, 5.1.1, that cognizance be taken of the notice from the IEC dated the 30th of June, 2022, 5.1.2, uh, that Councillor John Patrick Base be inaugurated as a Councillor of Garden Road District Municipality with effect from 30 June, 2022, if 5.1.3, that Councillor John Patrick Bass be requested to take the oath of office. Councillors, that's a recommendation. Can we go with that? Councillors, thank you. Can we now ask the councillor to come to the front, please?
my um can you can you just make a correction speaker uh, we it is required that a mover move the recommendation that it be seconded thank you um there's a hand for state back Yes, Speaker, I so move. Thank you. And the seconder? Councillor, just... I just second. Thank you. We've got the mover and a, and a seconder. Thank you. Do you want to say something, Alderman? the lady? Yes. Um, before you proceed, I'm sorry, um, Honourable Speaker. Um, I think I missed out um, apologies um, in terms of uh, declarations. I declare for my item in terms of restructuring of committees. That's so noted, uh, Alderman Lechava, on the lady. I must all get used to the new, all the new titles, so please forgive me. Um, you may proceed. Good morning, councillors. Um, I've got uh, Councillor Bais here. We're going to um, start with the oath. Um, I'm going to read, and you will just um, repeat what I have read. I, John Bass, hereby swear that I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. I, John Patrick Bass, swear that I will be faithful to, to the Republic of South Africa. And will obey and will obey respect respect and uphold the constitution and uphold the constitution and all other laws of the republic and all other laws of the public and i sol solemnly promise i solemnly promise to perform my functions to perform my functions as a member of the Garden Root District Municipality, of the member of the Garden Root Municipality, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, um, Councillor. Welcome to the family here at Garden Root. The next one is C2, that is in operation of DA Councillor um, to the Garden Root District Municipality of Councillor JJ Bavuma. Uh, we've got the recommendation on page 170, recommendation 5.1, that cognizance be taken of the notice from the IEC dated 20 July 2022, 5.2, that the following councillor be inaugurated as councillor of the Garden Root District Municipality. Can you just go up, please? 5.3, 5.2.1, that councillor Joseph Johannes Balhuma be inaugurated as a council of the Garden Root District Council with effect from 20 July 2022, 5.3, that Councillor Joseph Johannes Bavuma be requested to take the oath of office. Can I have a proposal and a seconder, please? Somewhere a mic is on because it must be read. Can everybody just switch off the... Uh, Councillor... Councillor Lamberjean, please switch off yours as well. Councillor Kanemeyer. I propose the uh, speaker. Thank you, Councillor Kanemeyer. Can I get a second, please? Thank you, Councillor um, Betsy van Wordwijk. Councillor, can you please come to the front? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Councillor, we... Yes, Councillor. Councillor Mkondo. Uh, 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 I'm not seconding, but I've just had a question. Yes, Councillor. 
the question is that can be given a reason, maybe the other councillor that was uh, Parker? No. Why is not here? Mayuri, you maybe want to respond because I don't think we we need to, to entertain that. Maya? Please switch off. Maya? Madam Speaker, thank you. I was going to address that in my communications. But if, if, yeah. So you, do you want me to respond? All right, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, colleagues, as you all know that uh, Councillor Barker was a member of a mayoral, uh, my mayoral committee. And as you also know that it is firstly my prerogative in terms of who served on my mayoral committee and is then also the party's prerogative on where they deploy their councillors. And all those matters happened in-house politically. We as a party, the Democratic Alliance, we made those decisions and hence the, the swearing in of uh, our new councillor here. So councillor Barker will be serving full-time in Mossel Bay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maya. I knew that you were going to, to talk about that. That's why I didn't want to allow it, but seeing that there was a, a, a direct question, thank you for answering that. You may proceed, Tricks. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I, Joseph Bavuma, hereby swear. I, Joseph Bavuma, hereby swear. That I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. That I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. And will obey, respect, and uphold the Constitution. And will obey, respect, and uphold the Constitution. And all other laws of the Republic. And all other laws of the Republic. And I solemnly promise to perform my functions. And I solemnly promise to perform my functions. As a member of the Garden Root District Municipality. As a member of the Garden Root District Municipality. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So yeah. Thank you. Congratulations, Councillor. Tricks, if pain, tricks. So we will now deal with item C3, and that is the conferment of aldermanship on serving councillors. And uh, you will find that on page 175 to page 185. There's a recommendation that the title of alderman and elder lady be conferred to Councillor J.C. Lumberjean and Councillor N. S. and I as a serving councillor who both qualify in terms of the criteria as contained in the policy of the conferment of alderman honour and in the manner as contained in this report. Councillors, can I get a proposal and a seconder, please? For the recommendation. The councillor Kanemeyer um, was first. Thank you. A second. Thank, thank you, you. councillor Kanemeyer. So proposed and to was seconded by councillor um, Wachbart. Can can we first have councillor Ndai? Mayer, will you please hand over the the certificates? Councillor Ndai, yeah, it, it is here, yeah, Mayer. Alderman, all the lady and die.
Um, Councillor Lamborghini, you can also come to the front. Councillor, then we coming to the next part of our of our proceedings. Um, we've got three staff members. Um, the one started. It's forty plus thirty plus thirty. So we will start with uh, Mrs. Nelly Meyer. She's got forty year service at Garden Road. Mrs. Mayer started working in this institution when it was still Klinker Road District Municipality in 30, on 13 May 1982 as a cashier, and now she's the resort manager. Later, the municipality was amalgamated to Southern Cape Municipality and then to Eden District Municipality, and now it is the Garden Road District Municipality. Mrs. Mayer is the mother figure of the Hook Mountain Resort. A passion for the resort makes the guests feel like it's a second home and a demanding presence, reliability and work ethic is few of the key components of the resort success. On behalf of the Garden Root District Municipality, we would like to thank Ms. Mayer and for her excellent service towards the resort. Thank you. Can you just stand up and come to the front, please? Baie, baie geluk aan Nelly dat we rere gedoen wees. Jo, om so lang by een plek te werk. Congratulations. Prachtig. Then uh, our second person is um, going to be um, Yapi Stradom. This is long overdue. He is working for the municipality for 30 years. 30 years. Mr. Yapi Stradom started working in this institution with it when it was also Stoklinka Road District Municipality in April 1992 as the head of the department, which was later amalgamated to Southern Cape District Municipality and then later Eden District Municipality. And now it is Garden Root District Municipality. In the 30 years that Mr. Stradom has worked for this institution, he has never taken sick leave. Yo. Nor did he have an injury on duty. He has also taken only, he has also only taken normal annual leave. Congratulations, Mr. Stradom. Then we've got another 30 years service. Um, he's got a whole resume that they've wrote about him. Coincidentally, he is from my hometown, from Riversdale. So I firstly didn't recognize the name, but you know, the Bainama. Um, so when I saw him, I was quite surprised. Can we just ask, where is the certificate of Buden? Oopsie. <laughs> We can we can forward it, but we can borrow one of the others <laughs> just for the photo opportunity. Mr. Henry Janssen, known as Buta Ben, started his career at the Garden Root District Municipality, known as Streep Dinsterat, in 1992 as a 26-year-old man. Danke, danke. Over the span of his 30-year service, he had the opportunity to work under Various managers, including Mr. Ervos, the office head of the ESOFWA Municipal Health Services. 
The fact that he has worked under so many managers, it allowed him the opportunity to build up a lot of experience, not only work experience, but life experience for which he will be ever grateful. Moments in his career that makes you smile. When the clinic was part of the council, Mr. Janssen at times had to drive the clinic bus to the farm areas. And after a while, the people in the rural areas believe him to be a doctor. Special thanks from Mr. Henry Janssen, it will garden root municipality, Raad and Bestier bedank, that if here kon werk, voorspoed en mag net voet het en gins op hier die organisatie is. Note from Heimish Herwels, as a person, Mr. Henry Janssen played a big role in my life as a manager and as a person. He has always been the sound one in the office, always the same person, his work ethic is admired. I firstly want to congratulate him on his milestone of 30 years service, which seems like a lifetime and wish, wish him all the best with his retirement. In closing, I want to leave you with one of Buddha En's favorite saying, Daar moet altijd respect, discipline en stiptelikheid in a kantoor wees. Baie dankie. Omen, jy kan maar voor in te kom. And in it answer of it. Congratulations, congratulations to everybody. It is indeed great milestones. Councillors, before we proceed, maybe you want to congratulate the, the newly inaugurated councillors. I will give you an opportunity now. Oh, there is the certificate. Thank you. Maya, can we pose for the for the photo again? Bonnie. Bonnie Celia is Joe Sculpt. Thank you, Bonnie. Can we now proceed, councillors? Can we proceed to item number six? That is the communications by the speaker. Um, I've already welcomed you back after our recess. Um, the following councillors will have their birthdays um, in, in August. Uh, that will be Councillor Kritzinger on the 4th of, of August and Councillor Kronier on the 26th of August. So I want to wish you up front a very happy birthday. And also Councillor Strubel, well, the 13th will also, so maybe you didn't make the list, mm -hmm. uh, but congratulations to those councillors. Councillors, that is in short uh, uh, from my side. Then we will proceed to point number seven, that is communications by the executive Maya. Maya? Yes, councillor. Yes, um, yes, Councillor Lechaba, I know when you phoned me about your IRP5, you've asked me that question. Councillors, we did not have that meeting last week, but you will receive your still today. Before the end of the day, we will get the, the date for the next meeting, um, Councillor Lechaba. Um, I was a bit under the weather last week, so um, that's why we didn't call the meeting, but it will be called within the next week, and my office will be communicated with all our chiefs, or chief whoops, as well as the whip of council. Maya, you may proceed.
Okay.
Um, Maya, thank you very much. Um, we've got a problem with our sound. So I've just been asked by Kumati Services if we can please break for 10 to 15 minutes because I've received now a lot of WhatsApps from people that say that they can't hear even from our own officials. So there's definitely a problem with our sound. So counselors, can we please break for, for 15 minutes in order for Marcellus and the team to sort it out? We can hear you now. We can hear you now, Speaker. The first time the whole meeting with is now we couldn't hear you, but now I can hear you the first time. Apologies. All the other, all the other uh, online members. No, it's only the speaker that we can hear. Okay, so then we will we will break for the for the fifteen minutes. Can yes, they say they can only hear me. So can we please break for 15 minutes, Maya? They can't, Maya. Can we please break for 15 minutes? Maya, can I quickly see you, please? 15 minutes. Thank you. So the DA counselors and uh, Freedom Front Plus, can you just pause for a moment, please, Mr. Akar? Don't, don't. Will we back by five past? What do you know? Testing, testing. Anybody can hear me? I can hear yeah. you, Marcellus. Marcellus, we can hear you. Can hear you now. But it's only the remember, it's only the speakers. 
Uh, Marcellus, ons kan jou hoor, as jy nie van die speaker af praat nie, dan hoor ons jou nou. Ok, dankie Kroos. Dankie, bye. Uh, testing. Testing. Counselors, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you on my side. Thank you. Thank you. 
And it was like the Anas. Chris, can you hear us? Yeah, thank you. I can hear you clearly. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Cornelius, can you hear us? Councillor Cornelius, can you hear us? Uh, loud and clear. Thank you. Councillor Matika, can you hear us? Councillor Matika, can you hear us? Our Lady Rusina writers, can you hear us? Thank you. 
Thank you, all the lady writers. Uh, Lauren James, can you hear us? Yes, Rihanna, I can hear you. Louise Hook, can you hear us? Louise Hook, can you hear us? Councillor Skippers, can you hear us? Yes, Oriana, I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Balan Puru, can you hear us? Affirmative, Rihanna. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Balan. We can also hear you. Jan Willem. Okay. Oh my goodness.
Rihanna, as I know, Reh. Can you, before we proceed, counselors, can you just test your mics, please? Maya, we can start with you. Am I audible, Madam Speaker, counselors? Am I audible, those who are online? Please indicate. We can hear online. Thank you. Can some of the counselors that are online please respond if they can hear us? Councillor Gungubele, anybody? Yes, I, speaker, I can we can you. hear you. Thank you, thank you very much, Councillor Cornelius. Can you hear me, speaker? speaker? Maya? Madam Speaker, are we back in session? I just wanted to check the sound before we proceed. Um, we haven't started recording yet. Um, yes, we can. We, we proceed. Thank you, um, Rihanna. You can start the recording. Um, my apologies for, for the break um, in, in, in sound that you could not hear, um, counselors. Uh, but please, if there's a problem again, um, just indicate to us. Um, just send a WhatsApp to anybody in the chamber so that we can sort it out. But for now, it is sorted. Um, Maya, we are back in session. You may proceed. Can we hear the Maya? No, we can't. We can't. We can't, speaker. One, two, one, two. Now we're back. We can hear you, Mayor. Police, yes, I'm back. All right. Madam Speaker, thank you. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm, I'm raising my hand to, to apologize to my colleagues uh, who, are, who are online, who could not hear my, my, my mayoral input. Uh, but safe to say, Madam Speaker, that it is recorded. It can then be uh, it's on record, it can then be distributed. My apologies for that, because if I have to say that, I'm going to contradict myself because I spoke off the cuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Executive Maya. Herman, just give me, an give me an indication by virtue of a thumbs up that it is available. Uh, we will now proceed to item number eight, that's communications by the municipal manager. Yeah, speaker, good morning. Uh, the mayor has delivered his uh, mayoral speech. According to tradition and the rules of order, we are allowed to speak on. on yeah. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm asking, are you going to give us a chance to respond? Okay. Uh, speaker, 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 you didn't afford us that opportunity. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, we thank you and uh, Hello? Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I think Honorable Mayor, is it working now? Okay. Honorable Mayor, I think um, it is important, um, as you have said about the, about the economy, how can we um, give uh, a, a, a um, 
like no, but um, meaning that how can we revive our economy in the garden route? I think the fact that to concentrate in the informal uh, sector, I think is the, the very good and also emerging sectors that can emerge out of the COVID and also the fourth industrial revolution. How are we as the district, how far and how we as a district are we um, positioning ourselves? And therefore, on those regards, I think it is a good thing. However, I just think that uh, we must go even beyond um, uh, with the informal settlement, with the informal economy, because I think it has a potential in South Africa, particularly also in our region, and also tapping into also all as other aspects of the, the transport in, in, our, in our district. So there's a lot of opportunities, but they need a, a, a better coordination. They need us to think about those things and also to, to apply our mind. Because at this time, we are needed to think outside the box for us to be able to our economy to go back. Um, we also would like to congratulate the Banyana Banyana. Um, what a great success. And uh, we will, however, I am sure, Mayor, under your leadership, we will be inspired, uh, perhaps on the Southern Cape particularly, to have a Banyana Banyana, a Southern Cape Banyana Banyana, uh, whereby we have the team for women uh, for soccer. That should inspire us to start such because there is a potential we have seen and also equally in the netball and also other avenues. But we congratulate the Banyana Banyana. Thank you. Alderman Gerica. Can I just ask if our uh, online um, participants, uh, councillors, or officials, anybody, can you hear Alderman Gerica? I can't hear him, speaker. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, and uh, to all the other colleagues. Uh, first and foremost, on the mayoral speech, before I get there, Mr. Mayor, during the interval, I have requested the municipal manager for a meeting. Uh, I have ever since decided to cancel that meeting, Mr. 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 MM. I've respected you as a professional. Uh, I will not then engage in that meeting. Uh, let us uh, let us take this uh, let us take this thing then the legal route. I thought on uh, in engaging with you cordially. No, it is not. You can roll me out of order. It's not part of the agenda. It was just in the interval. It's fine, and I do not implicate them. The, the MM I'm saying. Okay, so it's fine then. I, yeah. Speaker, I do not understand what's going on now. Um, I do not think the mayor made any reference to a meeting between myself and Councillor Herring. And Councillor Herring is responding to the mayor's address. Now, Councillor Herring came to me outside of the meeting and requested that I meet him. I have agreed. I do not know what's going on now. It has got nothing to do with this, but the mayor said in the council meeting. No, the MM is right. Maybe I shouldn't have said it here, but the message is through it anyway. Thank you. That was the main purpose of this. Uh, so the message is that I am not in, I withdraw. This is with the message. Thank you. Madam Speaker, the, on the, Madam Speaker, I am I'm, I'm raising on the point of order on the last comment made by Alderman Herica because that is a clear indication that he's abusing the platform. Councillor, are you withdrawing before I allow the MM again? Maya? Okay, 
Councillor, Councillor, are you withdrawing that statement you've made? Amen. Speaker, this is unfair. I was approached privately for a meeting, and now that interaction is a subject of a discussion in response to a mayor's speech. I do not understand what is being played here because this is a public meeting. This is unfair, Speaker, and I take offense. Can you please also apologize then to the MM? That you have raised it here because it's got no relevance for the meeting. We have no, it had no relevance to the meeting now. Can we just proceed? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let us, as the PBI, congratulate uh, the new councillors to the house, uh, Councillor Bays and Councillor Bavuma. Uh, congratulations on your appointment uh, as councillors to the Garden Road District Municipality. And also, congratulations to the uh, officials for the long service awards. Uh, it was something significant to witness in this chamber this morning uh, that somebody is in service of this municipality without one single particular day of sick leave. Uh, that is very inspiring. Mr. Mayor, the uh, PBI uh, joins you in congratulating the Banyana Banyana team. I was one of the supporters that set up late night to watch that game. It was a profound, remarkable game. And it also has played a significant role uh, in bringing the nation together uh, on a sport level. Uh, just for the sake of interest, I've listened to a conversation yesterday on SAFM uh, where they discuss different types of sport and where they say that uh, it's only certain races that support certain types of sport codes. And that is something uh, that really needs to be addressed when it's soccer, it's this race. When it's cricket, it's another race, and so on and so on. This is part of the everyday politics of our country. We cannot wish it away. We've got to address it. Uh, and I believe also the reason why I mention it is part of our duties as councillors to build the nation through our speeches, through our conduct, and through our plans and strategies that we do put in place in order to build this new the rainbow nation. The uh, I agree with you on the that you said that this is the term of execution. There's no dispute on that, and I am also delighted to hear about the employment uh, of some of the people that you've mentioned to different uh, departments or to different types of businesses. Those that have been trained. Uh, I am extremely delighted to hear about the uh, the informal trader meeting, sector meeting that you had. Uh, this is very long overdue. And I think, truth be told, and to be fair, uh, as I normally am, I, I'm fair when, it, when, when, when you deserve it. And I think it's commendable that this meeting has come down uh, and also that you and the department got the informal traders together because there's some uncertainties uh, on their side when it comes to trading and so on. But by the same token, Mr. Mayor, we want to call on you as the district mayor, the PBI calls on you as the district mayor, to engage on a local level. Because, yes, it is commendable to uh, to host these people, and it is a profound initiative from the economics department to engage on that level. But even though when we engage on this level and your local councils or municipalities do not do away with the red tape and with the bureaucracies, then the exercise will be a futile exercise with, with, with due respect because they are in charge of the bylaws, and they are in charge of what should happen in a specific town. 
and what should not happen in a specific time. So if there's no movement and the, uh, uh, President Mbeki has alluded the other evening to the statement that you made in this council about the the uh, uh, this thing that, that happened in Tunis, the Arab Spring. And I think this is becoming uh, a point of debate, point of concern, that sometime or the other, this Arab Spring will happen if, if we do not pay proper attention to the plight of the informal sector, and if we as a government do not contribute towards decentralizing the economy so that everybody can be uh, involved in the mainstream economy. And here we talk, Mr. Mayor, when we talk, when we speak about this, we talk about all races, all colors, and all types of people and businesses, types of business that should be accommodated in this plan or strategic plan so that people can roll out uh, their businesses. Let me just, in closing, draw your attention to the following. And please hear my heart. We just came from Mpumalanga, my wife and I. We stayed in Azibio. And the next day, we've been to the Kruger National Park. The next day, we went to the Blyder River Canyon. And it's the first time I've ever seen this in my life. I was just so delighted. As far as you drive from Hazy View upwards, through Busbach Reach and all those places, there are houses built along the wayside. I think here to the Satsikama, it's a long string of houses. And I stopped over and it was all constructed, built houses, beautiful houses. And I asked the guys, can you show me where we can find the squatter camp here? All over in that Mpumalanga. I have not seen one single particular squatter camp. You can trust me on this. I haven't seen it. And these people got beautiful houses. And I asked them, how do you afford these type of houses? They say, no, we got support from the government to first and foremost manufacture the bricks. And then the land, the stands are given to them for only 10,000 rand. I've heard it from a couple of people. And this is how our people are blended into this type of economy. Uh, and they are, there's activity there. People are partners in the, in the parks and so on. And this is what we are pleading for here. Let us make all people, I think some people take exception when we say our people. Our people, our people is God's people. But let us make a concerted effort to include everybody in this economy, because if we include people in the economy, the race relations will become easier and everybody will have access to resources and to the economy. I leave it there, Mr. Mayor. I give you food, food, food for thought. I know that sometimes you think on the things that we submit in this council. And if you don't have the answer, you come back. But let it be part of your strategic conversations in your strategic meetings so that we move forward. It cannot. I am. I don't care about who's my enemy. And I don't care if you have fire in your eyes when you look at when I speak. But we can, it cannot be business as usual as it is now. But lastly, I want to say congratulations on this initiative. It is heartening uh, that it is at least listened uh, to the informal traders. And I think it's a step in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council um, Alderman Gierke. Mayor, do you want to respond? Can't hear the mayor, speaker. Councillor, oh, you can hear me now, Councillor. Thank you. Apparently, I've just been advised we must press it twice. If you're not audible the first time, you press it again. Madam Speaker, I'm going to start with the uh, elder lady, Lichaba, and I'm going to touch on two issues. I like uh, the, the terminology she used that we must think out of the box. That is indeed what we need to do sometimes. And to just be a copycat, you know, does not always work. But one has to come out with 
new initiatives and emerging economies, and we can trigger an emerging economy. Nothing stops us. So I like that one. And the issue, uh, Elder Lady Lichata also touched on, on the issue of sport, of transport. I must say, uh, colleagues, is that remember at one stage we had the discussion that we should uh, probably we have the potential to become a metro, et cetera, et cetera. That discussion was precisely based on the fact that we have all the networks. We have airports in the district. We have railway lines. We have some of the best roads. We have ports in Mosul Bay, in Stowe Bay. You mentioned. I don't even want to go old students where the uh, flying school, Beatles, whether you name it, you name it. But it reminds me on the fact that those things are dormant. The majority of those things are dormant. Our railway is not active, et cetera. That is indeed an area we need to seriously uh, give uh, national government a headache because the infrastructure is here. We, need, we just need to expand on that. Madam Speaker, on uh, the issues raised by uh, both of them, uh, we, we, we all sing this, the same song when it comes to Banyana Banyana and uh, to make sure that sport, because sport is a unifying act. So sport is definitely uh, one of uh, the great things. The issue of bylaws, indeed, bylaws are a challenge, and one needs to continue to engage our peers and the local municipalities on how to deal with bylaws. I actually want to go a step further. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this, uh, uh, beside the bylaws, it is also the turnaround time of council resolutions when people apply for permits and when they submit plans, everything that needs council permission for them to make the economy tick. We also need to have that debate that resolutions can be reached within a month, within weeks, and not months and months and months and months. The other part that uh, Alderman uh, Herrick alluded to, the issue of sport, I'm going to give you an example and I'm going to talk about myself. I got two teenage daughters. The one is very good at hockey. The other one is very good at netball. The other teenage daughter, she holds the 100 meters record at her high school. She's no longer at the high school. She's now working, but her record still stands. And that very same daughter of mine, she went for trials. Banyana Banyana, speaking about Banyana Banyana. Now, what I want to say here, and this is how I want to respond to the issue raised by Alderman Herrika. Now, there's hockey, there's netball, there's athletics, there is soccer in my house. And when we have the discussion, because they're good at all of this, when we have the discussion, I say to them, you choose. So I'm going to underline it by saying sport is a choice. You don't get driven into sport because you're the mayor's daughter, or you don't get kicked out of sport because you live beyond the end two. Sport is a choice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maya. Um, we are now point number nine, um, MM. Uh, excuse, my apologies, point number eight, communications by the municipal manager. Thank you, uh, speaker. Uh, good afternoon, um, the executive mayor, deputy mayor, people of council, and um, other ladies, other men and councillors, um, colleagues. Let me speak first uh, on behalf of the administration, um, welcome and congratulate the two councillors that were inaugurated today, Councillor Pavuma and Councillor Base. You, you are most welcome, and uh, we hope that uh, you will experience the good service that we uh, try to render to all councillors of, of, of our council. So you're most welcome. Um, 
I think I should also, also on behalf of the administration, uh, Madam Speaker, congratulate uh, the colleagues that have served this council for many years, 30 years and 40 years. I think it is well, it has well uh, served uh, the process. Um, also to welcome and congratulate the two elder councillors, uh, Elder Mandampis and Elder Lady Ndai. Uh, congratulations and uh, welcome to the club of uh, elder councillors. I see the majority of my councillors are becoming elders, so I suppose it's a sign of the experience that we have in the, in the gym. Um, Madam Speaker, there are just a few issues that um, we would like to bring to the attention of council that as the mayor was uh, speaking uh, regarding, among others, the informal traders uh, meeting that was held, we would like to invite councillors to please engage with your growth and development strategy that you have uh, approved. Um, some of the things that uh, you are raising, like the issue of roads or connectivity is addressed in the strategy. And we would like you to have your inputs on the implementation. We have put together structures um, that are easy with the implementation of the strategy. And it is what is guiding us uh, moving forward. And um, to that end, I would like to brief council on the first project being the original waste facility. Um, I know that um, you come from various uh, localities and you get a lot of uh, information that, um, uh, that is not borne out by facts. What I can tell you now is that yesterday, the bid evaluation committee set to evaluate the bank tenders that we have uh, received. So we are at the stage of determining which institution will fund the project. So basically the project is happening. Um, the BEC met yesterday, so they will make their decisions in terms of the supply chain policy. Secondly, the tender for construction uh, is complete. We are just waiting for the Department of Water um, to approve the final designs for the project uh, in Mosul Bay. Once that is done, you will see it in the papers very soon. So that project is ongoing. Um, the only thing we're dealing with is to ensure that by the time Petros A um, decides that um, we can no longer use them, that we'll have an alternative either there at Petros A, 90% uh, or somewhere nearby, so that uh, for the period that they would be closed, we'll still be able to have somewhere to dispose of our waste. That work is ongoing. So. The information I'm sharing with you is known by all municipalities in the district that are participating in the project because uh, we have taken them through. They are aware about the detail as to what is going on. Um, the second thing, uh, Madam Speaker, is regarding the whole issue about uh, water and sanitation. We will be commencing with the Section 78 assessment, which is your Systems Act. Um, which is um, the almost um, penultimate step for us to arrive at a decision. Um, a lot of work has already been done um, as bad as 2010 about the water infrastructure of this region and what options we have. Um, recently, with COCTA and MISA, which is the agency of MISA, we just completed the infrastructure assessment for all the municipalities in the region. And those reports will be coming um, in the coming council meetings to show you what is the status of water and sanitation infrastructure in the region as a whole, and to show you why um, the section 78 is being done and why we believe that um, the Garden Road District must be given the water services authority status. So the information will be put in front of you. Um, Mr. Mayor, you mentioned about the issue of the Metro. 
status for the uh, region. You will recall at the strategic planning session, we had two presentations by two different uh, departments on the metro status. We have a team in the municipality that is working on the idea. We will bring it to you. Our view is that there must be finality on whether or not there will be a metro here so that we stop discussing this in little corners and not finish it. We'll present all the options. Everybody will be consulted. You will take those decisions. So on our side, we're going to do our work. That, that item will be coming to you uh, very soon. Um, Madam Speaker, we have shared recently with the councillors that are in the um, WhatsApp groups some recruitment that is taking place um, uh, through the skills maker. The mayor did mention one of the sitters. We are expanding. You might have seen that we're looking for 10 technicians um, that are going to be deployed in the district. We are working with CPUT. Um, to get, um, I mean, they're already here, some of the people. So the skills maker process is actually bearing fruit. And uh, we're we signing a lot of MOUs with the relevant institutions. And um, I'm sure in the next council meeting, we're going to bring you another update to report on the skills maker process and where we are. Um, we informed you, councillors, that uh, there was a pending visit by the deputy president that was scheduled for the 8th. It has been postponed to the 19th of August. So the deputy president will be coming 19th August unless um, there is uh, something that has, uh, has, has changed. Recently, councillors, you recall that we you approved a a policy on how to um, utilize staff efficiently in the organization. Um, we are starting to implement that process. It has started in the office of the MM. Um, uh, two officials that have acquired new qualifications, one in labor law has been moved to the labor relations office to gain practical training. The other with the become qualification has been moved to the internal audit um, to implement their skills. So that process is going to be implemented across the institution so that people can actually be productive in the organization um, so that um, some of the vacant posts that um, are required um, and are not used uh, are, are done so. Um, Mr. Mayor, we, we, we are moving very, very fast and uh, with some impact on the human settlement uh, agenda. Um, there are items in the agenda giving some progress. Um, we will be soon um, organizing some important functions um, to hand over certain parcels of land. And um, we will also be arranging for site visits by councillors to go and see the pockets of properties that we intend uh, to use for, um, for, for human settlements in the various uh, categories. Um, yes, thank you. Um, in, the, in the agenda that is in front of you, we will be requesting an opportunity to just correct the section 52 report, uh, TL33, it's just a minor correction so that when it's approved, it's, it's, the, it's the right uh, um, um, report. Um, I don't know, probably councillors have already gotten wind. Um, there is a property that we are leasing to some community in Deisel's dorm, um, Earth 2. We have a lease with them. There are members of the public that seem to be raising some questions. We are attending to that. Um, Madam Speaker, there is a matter that I would like to report in committee um, because of its sensitivity and the stage at which it is, which I would request that because there are no items now in committee that I be given an opportunity to report to council on that matter. 
And um, maybe just finally, on the 1st of August, there is going to be a human chain event for women around the head office. Um, the ladies are organizing a um, very impactful um, event. We'll be having that uh, on the 1st of August. And those uh, colleagues and people that are able to attend um, are, are most welcome to, to, to join us. Um, I think, Speaker, those are the matters I wanted to bring to the attention of Council. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, MM. Any questions for the MM? I note your end, Alderman Khirake. Any other end? I note your end, Councillor Letts. You may proceed, Alderman Khirake. Thank you, Mr. Bonisiva. Now, very briefly, uh, Madam Speaker, let us just uh, <clears throat> also, uh, Mr. MM, for the Speaker, uh, compliment yourself and your office and your staff uh, for the initiative, particularly with regard to the skills maker. It is oncoming for quite some time, uh, and I think you start to give some body and flesh uh, to this now. This is outstanding. It is particularly encouraging to hear that some there were some placements already, if I understand you correctly. We want to encourage you to go on with this, and uh, if there are budgetary uh, challenges, uh, I think you must bring those items to the council so that we speak. It is about time that we produce, that we do what we say, and love up to the slogan of what the mayor has earlier said, that this is the, the year of execution. Uh, and I think uh, we, we need to apply our minds uh, particularly there. I also want to let on to the following. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just hear my heart here. The, and, I, and I'm very glad that the municipal manager is calling for clarity on the status of a metro. Uh, because we are inundated with uh, also calls from people in business and other interests and, and also in the educational sector, Mr. Mayor, uh, that people want to know what's actually going to happen around here. What is now confusing, and I say this with all due respect, what, what is confusing now recently, just a day or two ago, the, 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 on the news, and it was in the news in the entire Western Cape, that George is now crowned as the plain Dorothy for the year. I don't know how to say it in English, the, the small Dorothy, the small little town of, of the year. Now, if you move, if you say that you move towards a secondary city like George, and that you bring this contradiction, autumn, the contradiction of a small Dorothy, automatically there's some confusion in the markets because the markets are gauging what is happening in your region and also in your in your in your in your towns. So if you can also just get clarity on that because if we if if we move towards a metro we all know the types of benefits that will accompany the metro. We know about that. Uh, and I think it's by time that we that we that that somebody champion this thing. Uh, and get us proper direction in terms of where we're going to move. Uh, the politics you can sort out on another level. Uh, maybe the ANC wants us to have a metro here. Yeah, maybe the ANC doesn't want us to have a metro. That's maybe some, some part of the politics. I'm just saying this tongue in the cheek, uh, Councillor Toto. But I mean, the, the new district model, uh, as has been explained, I think is championed by the deputy, Pre or no, by the president, should then be making provision for those type of arrangements and so on. Then lastly, Madam Speaker, yeah, uh, Mr. Amen for the speaker, the pockets of properties, I am also very encouraging to hear uh, for the remainder of my time that I will still be here, that I can also see, you must take note when I say in inverted commas for the remainder of my time that I'm gonna still be here. I also, I'm also very curious to go and see the pockets of land that's available in the region uh, and of what use it can be. And as I have said, that land is a critical issue this time in our politics. In our politics, we want to know where our land is. Uh, and thank you that you're raising those issues in this council this morning. Mr. Mayor, I thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Can everybody hear me online? I would like to start, Mr. Emim, to thank you and your administration and all the dedicated people that constantly work so hard for our area. 
to congratulate you and thank you for that. Um, I have two questions. One has to do with the Skills Mecca program. I really appreciate the fact that we start to roll it out and it's starting to really be fruit. But we do have one big stumbling block for the rural communities where those people do not have access to online applications. We need to please look at how to make it easier so that through our B municipalities, we can actually get some sort of application forms gone, going out and that we can actually roll that out then through our ward committees as such to reach those communities that do not have that. We have many, many matriculants with excellent school, school results. They have no access to any training, any transport and so forth. And for them to come in and to go into town costs them up to 50 rand a shot with a taxi. It's very difficult for a family that has seasonal workers to have a matriculant there and languishing at home and having to do seasonal work when they, have, when they ended up with four distinctions. I feel that we, we're dropping the ball somewhere and we have the best facility to do that. So if we can please roll that out in an analog and not just digital way, I would really appreciate that. That's the one thing. And then the other one, the MISA infrastructure assessment report. Do we have a date more or less as to when you expect it to be completed? Because it's important for us on our side for applications for MIG and so forth, because they need to be registered at a specific time. Madam Speaker, I was reconsidering whether I wanted to respond or not, and uh, you just caught me off guard. But let, let, let me just give my, as the, the leader of the PEC, let me give my view. But the engagements on my view uh, needs to be ongoing. On the, on the, I was one of the guys who were pushing, you know, because of our potential to become a metro. But colleagues, you will remember, then we had a, a, a guest uh, at our uh, strategic uh, session explaining the pros and cons of a metro. And now personally, as memory Boyson, there are too many cons when, when, when you're a metro. I heard when you're a metro, National Treasury brings buckets loads of money because remember we, we depend on equitable share and obviously the equitable share of a metro would be hundred times more than any other category of municipalities. But even so, when you weigh that up, I then thought, no, 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 no. We should not become a metro. That's my personal uh, 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 view. But my alternative is all seven municipalities must become smart cities. You know, you get, uh, you, you mentioned the term secondary city. Uh, George and Mossel Bay would definitely qualify to become secondary cities. But then what about the other municipalities? But if we do, and we give the same resources to all seven municipalities, and all seven municipalities can then punch above their weights by becoming smart, technology, uh, taking care of the youth, uh, partnerships, then every municipality will be a smart city and every municipality will become an economic hub. Because with the metro, one of my fears, with the metro, out of the seven municipalities, they'll probably amalgamate two or three municipalities to make up that metro. Then the other four or the other three would be on the periphery of the inner circle of the metro. And you, there is case law. Look at Mungai. Mungai is a third metro, and there are reasons for that. If you go to, to, to the Nelson Mandela metro, when I go to Mutmake, the people of Mutmake are saying everything is at PE because the all have moved. But if you think it was a smart city, P is a smart city, then everybody would have benefited. That is just my new outlook, but uh, this is open for discussion. The issue on 
on skills in the rural areas. I must say, colleagues, my heart bleeds when it comes to the rural areas. And the one rural area in particular that comes up is Kanaland. Colleagues, we had a discussion yesterday, even in Mako, and we are doing everything in our power to, to engage. And we do a lot with Kanaland. But truth be told, there are lots of challenges in Kanaland, and the challenges are political colleagues. If you even look at, we're talking here about the, inf the informal uh, sector uh, in Dubai we had, the stakeholders, the sponsors, they struggled to get uh, contact points within the municipality out of Kanaland. So that in itself tells a story, but we're not going to give up. We need to engage the rural areas. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I think we take note of the issue of online application for rural uh, youth. Um, the tricks behind me is nodding um, as they are responsible for the project. We'll monitor the progress. Thank you, Councillor. Um, the issue about the NISA report is that it's supposed first to serve in all the seven uh, municipalities. Now, we just need to track them because once they are done in the seven municipalities, there's a district report that must come here. But then we have the whole issue of the Section 70 assessment that must start. So maybe we should just, uh, I was talking to the HOG here that we should maybe look at our program to say maybe these reports must serve in August. Um, we probably we can't control then what happens in the agenda of the, the municipalities, but we'll talk to the MISA people to now push for the tabling of the reports because they show you the backlogs that all the seven municipalities have, especially with the bulk infrastructure. Um, maybe, Speaker, finally, on the debate on the metro or not, um, as you know, ours is to just give the information and um, the U.S. powers that we will make the decisions about whether or not we, we follow. So to finalize what we started um, with the presentation, the threat plan session, will bring the report to council um, for us is to show you this is the information and you make the decisions. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Imam. Councillors, we proceed to point number nine, that is the approval of minutes of council meetings. Um, the first um, set of minutes is on page 10 to page 17. Are there any corrections? Any corrections? If there are none, can I get a proposal? Proposal in a second, please. Um, can we first ask the people online? You are sounding very soft, councillor. Switch on your your mic again. Any of the councillors that are online, can you hear, councillor Iona? No speaker, I can't hear. Oh, I okay. Um, I propose, Madam Speaker. Um, are the lady Lechaba? Do you want to ask something? Um, is it, um, Honorable Speaker, the meeting of the 22nd? Okay. Take can, I, can I second, Chair? Once, no, we don't mind, don't flash. You see, mind, don't flash. Um, Councillor Myron, yes, I'm on a second, uh, Councillor Kritzner. Thank you. Now we proceed to the second uh, uh, set of minutes on page 18 to page 64. Are the lady, um, Lachaba? Was pressed twice. 
Okay, thank you, honorable speaker. I I think I'm on now. I think uh, we are robbed by this. Yeah, these gadgets are not assisting us. I wanted to um in the um the one of um the meeting that we had um it is I just think that there are some correction that needs to be done. Yes, the page. Um, um It's it's in connection with um, the meeting that we had. Um, you, it was about the the restructuring of committees, uh, whereby yourself you you represented the report, but you said you it is not your report, and then you gave it over to to the honourable mayor. But that it doesn't say that. It doesn't say. It just says that um, it's written in 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 in, in bold. Is is it page thirty? Yeah, thirty zero. Yeah, that that is the one. I think that's not a true reflection of it. We can go to to the to to the recordings. Um, it didn't record as such. Um, it said um, that um, but mine is different. It's not in the okay. Yeah. Hey. It says that there was an, a lot of discussion on this item that emanated from the communication of the speaker that this report be removed. But first, what happened is the honourable speaker disowned that report. You said it's not your report. You don't know. And then you gave you said it to 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 the to the mayor. Then you said the mayor must present the report. And then then the mayor then the mayor MM advised then the mayor spoke to say but it, it's supposed to be under you. And then the mayor said advise that council then it was then that statement is correct. That advice council that this report could only be dealt with under the speaker as it's legally authorized to do so. But it is not the true reflection because first you disowned that report. So it must be as such. Thank you. I don't know what's, yeah. It seems as if I must also press twice, okay? So was that correction made, councillors? Are there any other corrections? Are there none? Can I get a proposal and a seconder, please? Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I so propose. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'll, I'll second that. I own as and also Councillor um, Mayron. So we go with that recommendation uh, uh, with amended. Yes, thank you. Councillors, we proceed to item 10, that is the minutes of a mayoral committee meeting and section 79 committees uh, for notification. Can we note that? Thank you. 10.1, this was a mayoral committee meeting dated the 26th of April. You will find it on page 65 up to page 78. That's also for noting. Councillors, you are quiet. No ends. Uh, then we proceed to the standing items. Uh, it is on pages 79 to page 83. That is the appointment service exit and labor relations information for June 2022. Councillors, the report is, is, is there. Are there any? Uh, are the lady I owner? 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, the standing report is once again here for notification for council. I just want to um, emphasize that, please, um, as far as the department is concerned, that we should do all we can to support and assist um, those employees that are affected by sexual harassment. It's Women's Month coming up in a in a, in, a, in a week or two's time. So um, I really find it very, very um, serious that we do support these um, councillors or these um, employees um, affected by that. So I want to uh, propose that council take note of this report. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Before I ask for a seconder, um, are there any councillors that want to raise something on the report? Not nobody? Think? Yes, Alderman, Alder Lady, um, the Chava. Hello. Okay. Um, honorable speaker, I think um, we, we, the reports, we noted the report. However, because most of the disputes and uh, they are in progress, I think it will be good that when they are being concluded, because for now we cannot get just to get a, a, um, an update on the conclusions of all those, those, those that are in progress. But thank you for the report. Speaker, I'll second. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Swan. Now, Councillors, we're proceeding to the, so the proposal was Councillor Iona Kersinger and the second was Councillor Swan. We're proposing to sections A report from the Speaker. Uh, A1 is a restructuring of committees of council. Um, this was the, the item that was withdrawn previously. Uh, I'm tabling the report again today, uh, and um, it is specifically because it's legally authorized. I am legally authorized to monitor the effectiveness of the committees, um, as was said in our previous minutes. So I am tabling the report. Maya, I've seen that you have press your button. No, but it is red. Yours is supposed to become red because mine is not working on the same level as yours. So you can, you, again. My audible, then Madam Speaker, my apologies for interrupting. You can then finish your part on this item and then I'll raise my hand. Thank you, Maya. Yes, I am finished. I am tabling the report again today. Um, but I think um, it is just for record purposes and to bring it under the attention of council uh, that 10 to 15 minutes into the meeting, the official meeting, I've received a letter from um, Councillor Lechaba's lawyers. Um, but I think that is a different that is a different process. I'm not a legal fundi, so I think uh, I will have to ask for legal advice. Um, but the the, the Report is in front of us. So, um, Maya, that I think at this stage is all that I can, can say. I don't know if I am supposed to, to read. I, 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 I need advice because it's under my name, it's under the speaker's name because it's legislatively, it must be like that. Am I audible now? All right. M Madam Speaker, we've had this this uh, the debate previously in terms of uh, what what is in front of council and what is not in front of council. Now, Madam Speaker, uh, I am privy uh, to the legal letter you received. Now, that would then be unfair, Madam Speaker, if the other councillors are not aware of of what is it that is in our possession. So my, my, my opinion would have been, Madam Speaker, Council ought to know, we read that and then we then decide on based on that. And then I will then come back because I have my view again after we have read and make Council aware because Council needs to be aware that what is it that you grapple with and some are privy and some are not. Thank you. 
speaker speaker um who um can can colleagues those online can you please mute yourself somebody wants to speak but i don't know who it is because there's no Ma end Race. It's Matika. My it's Matika. My laptop doesn't. Matika, my I don't laptop. see anything. I don't see anything that shows a hand. From oh, nice. <laughs> then you must look on your gadget there for something that you can raise your hand. But councillor, you you may proceed. Thank you very much, speaker. Good morning. Good morning to the councillors, uh, speaker. I think uh, it could only be fair enough that uh, you, if you receive a letter pertaining to certain item, that that item we not proceed with it. It's only uh, uh, fair and legally, so that you can get legal advice outside of this. It is not proper for you to bring uh, the, the letter and say that this is a letter and that this is a content in the letter. We've been withdrawing items here based on hearsay, where we always been told that there's a letter from, from the office of Pratel, or there's a letter from, 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 from which is, is talking about something which we have never received in front of us. Then those items will always be withdrawn because there's always that motion that will say that there is a letter that's saying that's speaking about this item. So I'm saying that, Speaker, if there is a legal letter that regarding one of the issues that is here, you need not bring the letter in front of us to debate the letter and the merits. What needs to happen is that we withdraw that item because there is a legal, there is a legal process that needs to take place. Thereafter, that you need to, you, you don't need to, 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 to consult with the, with the mayor or anyone, just you and, 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 and the MM just need to, to, to sit down with the legal and look through the letter. Then the next meeting you will take us through. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Matika Emi. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I think it's important that uh, maybe I do this. I will not be able, Speaker, to say a word on the matter. Um, you are aware that uh, Councillor Chaba has approached the office and laid a complaint against me. So I am totally conflicted. I'm not the author of the item and I do not want to provide advice because it may be interpreted otherwise. So if you will, Speaker, it's not my item, but on this matter, probably if I could be recused so that uh, the matter is dealt with without my involvement, and none whatsoever. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be of the viewpoint that on this matter itself, the MM does not have to recuse him because the, 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 the content is not directed at the, at the MM. And the fact that people need some legal advice, the MM, I will understand how you feel, but you don't have to give legal advice. And I mean, you can give legal advice. We have other legal uh, people in the house. They can give advice. But now that I have the floor, based on what Councilor Matika have uh, recommended, again, I would say each and every item or each and every incident needs to be treated on its own merit. We cannot, if, if, if we've withdrawn an item because of hearsay, it has the merits at that time for that item. And we've agreed or disagreed to agree. And in this instance, uh, we now have a letter. The letter is known by, by some. The letter must be known by all. And then that causes its own merits for this and then we make the decision because uh if 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 i am privy to that and again i have an opinion on that which i would raise at the time based on what decision we are taking on that matter maya i just want to um if the mm feels uncomfortable being here I think we must allow and afford him that opportunity if we want to excuse himself or if we want to stay, then he can stay.
I, I agree with you, Madam Speaker. If the uh, MM is uncomfortable, let's not uh, live in a situation. Anybody else before I allow Councillor Matika? Proceed, Councillor Tauti. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Speaker, I'm a bit worried about the, the, the way the meeting is going on now. And uh, I, I'm also worried about the mayor, what the mayor said there. And I don't know what is the what 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 is in the letter. But what I've heard from the beginning, which you say it's a letter from a lawyer or so something like that. If that is the case, and we pursued with this item, and there's a letter from a lawyer to you, I want to personally distance myself from any decision taken on this item. Because in the end, we can be out liable who took a decision now, and then a month afterwards, we want to bring this letter. Uh, which 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 you as a speaker received, so uh, uh, I uh, uh, I can't force anyone to go ahead with this or, or not go ahead with it. But I personally uh, uh, want to uh, state it now clearly that I want to distance myself. If there's a letter like you said, and the council pursued uh, uh, go ahead with uh, discussing this item. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Tauti. Um, can that be, please make sure that it be recorded as such. Um, Alderman Lamberjean. Switch all the mics. Can we proceed? Um, Alderman Lamberjean, again, again, press again. Okay, that's it, that's it now. Thank you. Uh, Madam Speaker, yes, thank you very much for the opportunity. I was just wondering, Madam Speaker, um, because uh, for me, it seems maybe a little bit, uh, the order is not right. Uh, we want a legal opinion for this, uh, in terms of this item and the letter you have received. What I want to ask speaker is that, can we have the content of that letter before we can have a legal opinion so we can also form our own opinions as well before making a decision in the end? I just want to respond to that speaker. Am I audible? All right. Colleagues, this is also a learning school. You may press now, council, if you want to be next. Heaven on green. All right. Colleagues, uh, obviously, we are here to raise opinions. This is why we're here. We are counselors, and none of us are fundies, but we all have the right to raise opinions. And when we raise our opinions, then conclusions can be made. And I want to come back to the issue raised by Councillor Tauti. And this again is my my opinion and also my experience in some of these matters. In council, all councillors have privilege in council. That's the first point. We all have privilege in council. And secondly, because we have privilege, this is a jurisdiction. This is our jurisdiction. And it does not mean every time you get a lawyer's letter, you must you are a race, you must jump because a lawyer has written to you. Sometimes lawyers do not have jurisdiction in some matters. It is not automatic because you're a lawyer, everything must stop. Because this is a council, some lawyers don't have jurisdiction here. We have the jurisdiction and we have a lawyer. And then if the lawyer who has written a letter uh, feels that we have gone against uh, 
the natural justice or whatever they call it, there's recourse for that. But we can not every time because it's going to be very easy. Next time I didn't like an item, I'll let my lawyer write a letter. And then in the meanwhile, my lawyer don't have jurisdiction. But because we have set a precedent that lawyer or everything stops. Now I'm saying probably if we have, if we know what it's all about, we then make a decision to say that has this lawyer got jurisdiction here or not. And if he, if he doesn't have jurisdiction here, and whoever is aggrieved, there's another recourse. If you're not happy in council, you go to court. If you're not happy in that court, you go to the Supreme Court of Appeal. So that is how it works. But you can't if you get a letter, then you stop. Especially if you don't even know what the letter is all about. I can also come in and have a dummy and say, my lawyer, I'm written to you. Stop this item. In the meanwhile, you guys want to recall me. Or in the meanwhile, you don't have to remember his actions. Then I walk around with the lawyer's letters until I finish my term. It can't work like that. Speaker. Hi. Hello. 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 Yeah, can you hear me now? Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I don't know if you're going to call me to order now, but uh, for obvious reasons, uh, I am not a friend of uh, Councillor Lachaba, just for the sake of the record, for obvious reasons. Now, the, 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 let us just uh, speak sense into this thing. Uh, in terms of jurisdiction, uh, this is a two cutting edge. What if we believe the mayor statement, uh, which may apply today to this side, may tomorrow apply to that side also. Uh, I just leave that now for the sake of argument. And most probably you are right when you say the lawyer doesn't have jurisdiction, but the law does have jurisdiction. The law has jurisdiction on just about everything in our country. So let us just debate fairly. The third point, Madam Speaker, is that these allegations are contained in this report are very, very, very serious allegations. And certainly when you come up with allegations, then somebody must account because the the implicated councillor is in a very powerful seat, a powerful seat. So you must account. But in order for you to account, you must now in, uh, uh, invoke the Audi Ultram Batem rule. It means to hear the other side. Because you make the allegations. Under normal circumstances, let me assist you. Under normal circumstances, look, it is your prerogative on section 80 committees, you can chop and change, it's fine. It is a prerogative of the speaker to say, I don't want you on this committee anymore. It is, a, it is, it, it is the prerogative because we don't have the right to be on those committees. Under normal circumstances, you can change it. But under these circumstances, you bring allegations. No? And these allegations first needs to be addressed before we can do anything. Now, again, I state on record that I am not a lawyer. But if there's a lawyer's letter, it means now that the party or the parties have embarked on a litigation process. Now, you cannot ignore the litigation process. Unfortunately not. You cannot ignore the litigation process. Because if we make decisions here today, that might be ultra virus any legislation, then all of us may be held accountable in a court of law in terms of cost. That's a given. We've seen it. We've seen it in municipalities around us in our presence. So I have no objection, Mr. Mayor, in my heart. I have no objection against the report. In order to give justice to this report, this council may, must decide on the process to give justice to this report. 
And I think, Madam Speaker, since the Section 79 Committee's result under your jurisdiction, we must apply our minds and say, let us, let us do justice to the process. Let us embark on a process and then do justice to the process. Uh, here, the other side of the Alter and Patem rule, answer the lawyer. And normally, normally I know that the lawyers, the last sentence was, will be, if you don't adhere to our request, we will approach the courts. I don't know if that sentence is in there, but if that sentence is, is in there, then we must, then we must trample very carefully or tread very carefully here. As a brief as may play the way, as may play the way, that we, that we, uh, Madam, Mr. Mayor, I am in this, I'm, I'm in local government now for 10 years, now, over, just over 10 years. So we understand the stuff. We've been in, we've been advised by many advocates and lawyers and we, and we learn from these people. So I would advise, uh, my proposal would be, or the PVI's proposal would be, that we do not do away with a report. You, you cannot now withdraw or retract the report. You must deal with the report, but you must decide the process. That is all. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Sorry, thank you, Speaker. Hello, oh, yes, I am. This is exactly what's supposed to happen. The viewpoints and it triggers other things and whatever. Firstly, again, I might be right, I might be wrong. So my, the, the, the last speaker, uh, Alderman uh, Herika. Firstly, colleagues, then the other thing, the other point on the matters being raised. Councillor Lichaba is not on trial. So, so, I can't even pronounce the term ultra altum patel, whatever is, is, is not applicable. She's that word, thank you. That's not applicable as we sit here, as we speak. Uh, Councilor Chaba is not on trial, and this is a notice uh, from a lawyer. This is not a summons and everything that the processes in, in, in court would be different from our current processes here. So then I would then have a question on, on, the, on the views being raised by the opposition is that now here's a, a, a lawyer's letter. Now we back off and when do we deal with the matter? Because it, 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 it gets referred back and retracted because of lawyers' letters and whatever, when are we going to deal with the matter? Because we need to deal with the matter and the outcomes of how we deal with the matter will be the crux of the lawyers. We need to have an outcome. We can't sit and sit and nothing happens. We must make a decision. If it's a, if it's a, if it's a wrong decision, then it's a wrong decision. It's a, if it's a right decision, then it's the right decision. But we need to do the matter. We can't sit back because a lawyer was uh, working for us. We need to do the matter. Um, Maya, thank you. I will first ask Councillor Matika. He has raised his hand now for a long time. He's online. Then I've noticed Councillor, um, first Councillor Tauti, then Councillor Gierica. Oh, Councilor thank you very much. Proceed. Thank you very, thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, I think we should be careful in how do we selectively deal with issues based on this on the on the agenda. Speaker, before we went to this item, you told us that there is a letter pertaining to this item from Councillor Lichaba which I thought you should have re removed the item from the agenda after you've received the letter for us not to debate the issue further. Because the item on its own has serious, there are serious allegations on the item. 
which on the item on its own, which I believe that item should have went first to, to the green pages, then come to the to the open agenda. But nevertheless, Speaker, I want to say to you, Speaker, <clears throat> the only one that is going to account is the office of the Speaker. Because the office of the Speaker is the one that is in charge dealing with the agenda and the council meeting, not the mayor, not the deputy mayor's office. So the only one that is going to account is office of the speaker. So I will have said that when there is a letter, whoever the letter came to from anyone, but when there is a letter, there is a legal letter, it needs to be taken serious. We cannot proceed while we know that there is a legal letter uh, talking about a certain item, and then you proceed. You say here in front of us is a legal letter. We've been told that no, we have received a call. No, there's a letter from this minister. There's a letter from this. We cannot deal with this. But now we are receiving a letter, a legal letter, in which you, the speaker, has confirmed. So I'm saying that all in all, the only person that will account is the office of the speaker, not anyone else. So I will say to you, speaker, and put it in you and put it on record that. If I were a speaker, this item I will refer on the next meeting and even remove on, on open agenda after you have consulted with your, your, your legal. Because you need to consult with the legal. You cannot come and do a rush rush because you want to please people. You need to go and consult with your legal because this is an open meeting. Anywhere, it's on YouTube. Come and read the letter. People want you to, other councillors say, no, read the letter. You read the letter and open it on YouTube. And even that letter maybe is answering certain allegation. is implicating maybe other people. We don't know the letter. I haven't read the content. Then you are not doing justice to those who are in the letter or to any allegations that has been here. Because this is an open meeting for anyone. It's not only a closed meeting that where councillors could have been taken through. It's an open meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Matika. Councillors, can we have one meeting, please? Councillor Tauti. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, I'm, I'm, a, I'm very worried as I sit here. Uh, I, I was in here a while long ago. Uh, now I'm in, in, in the, very ex, the very same DA party. I don't know if you were called DA or what you were called at that time. But we, I was mayor at that time, and I was also very hard hard like the current mayor there now. And, and we didn't listen to advice. And at the end, it wasn't the speaker who was, uh, 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 what, uh, what, uh, what Councillor Matika said now, that the letter is to the speaker and the speaker is responsible. At the end, when we take a decision on this report, it's not the speaker who's taking the decision. Is this whole council who's taking this decision? Uh, and, and that will implicate not only the speaker, but also me as a council who took that decision. And I remember at the end in Essequa, and I know uh, Councillor uh, Stephen de Vries is always using the Essequa example when he do training. Our councillors were held responsible for taking a decision, and we had to pay out of our pockets, not council. We had to pay out of our pockets the cost for taking the decision uh, at the end. And that is what I'm trying to warn. What, what, I don't know what is in that letter. And I don't understand why we can't stop, get the letter as counselors, the rest of our council, read what is in the letter and, take an, uh, and make an opinion. But, but, but uh, uh, speaker, if I can give you some advice, and, and uh, you don't need to take it, and even the mayor, the only thing which we can we, we can go ahead with a, with this report, take note of the report or whatever, but take out this thing which speaks to Councillor the Chava. Take that out of the report until we sorted out this thing with a letter, or we also saw what is in the letter coming from a lawyer. That's the only thing when I when when I heard you say there's a lawyer's letter, I'm worried immediately. And I don't want to be part of a decision. Uh, 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 when when there's a like a sword hanging over our heads, and it's not a, a, a it's it's not that we are scared. Uh, it's totally not that. Uh, we 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 should 
we should, and, and, and another thing, Mr. Mayor, the report do, although you say she's not on trial, but there's certain allegations in this report, which is worrying. And we wanted to speak about that today, but now there's a letter and I don't think we should have any discussion on it until we saw this letter coming from her lawyers. If the lawyers say, no, it's fine, go ahead and speak about it, then it's fine. Then, well, then we haven't got a problem. But if that is a, a kind of a threatening kind of letter coming from her lawyers about this report based on this impact report, then I'm worried. And I ask you, Speaker, take out this out of the report. Let's adopt the report without this part of the impact. Until, or, or you can uh, give us a letter so that we can see what is going on there. Thank you, Councillor Tauti. Um, Councillor Gierke and then Councillor Akker. Uh, speaker, and just lastly, uh, no, Mr. Mayor, we are not backing off. You cannot back off from a process like this. You've already embarked on the process. So we cannot back off. We must, we must deal with the process. So the PBI concedes that we must deal with the item. That's the first point. Secondly, let us be fair towards anybody here. Colleagues, today you are in power. And yes, you are in power. Nobody can deny it. But we must be very careful how we try to power. And with the names of people. And with the integrity and the reputation of people. All people. When we make decisions here, Mr. Mayor, our decisions must be consistent with democracy and with democratic principles. The Audi Altram Batem rule is contained in all documents. If you bring allegations, the other person must be afforded the opportunity. That's part of our country's democratic dispensation for the democratic laws. Even if you don't like the face of the person, you must give that person an opportunity to respond. Yes, you are right, Mr. Mayor. I think it's the fourth time I concede to what you said. You are right that Councillor the Chaba is not on trial, but the allegations bring her automatically on trial. It's automatic. Uh, so you cannot deny that, you cannot wish it away. Again, I say, the authority of the speaker, the section 79 committee, and you may deal with this the way you like, but it must be consistent with democracy. Then lastly, I want to say, since this is serving at an open council, look, we are fortunate that nobody is reading portions of this into the record to the public. We are fortunate, we, we apply our minds here because the allegations here are as it stands until the other side is proven. This, these allegations are defamatory. And it may constitute permanent jury. Yes, it may. Because it's defamatory. I, I, I cannot just come in here and say, oh, counselor, you, 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 I, you, you were with a woman, uh, and yes, and name. You no, know, even though we have indemnity, I cannot, I must take responsibility for my deeds. So let us apply that principle of accountability and let us then, I don't know, uh, a speaker, but uh, the, the, and then the other thing is, if this, if this, these allegations are serious allegations, it is very serious. And, and, and you cannot have a person in a position like this if you have such allegations against such a person. And it means that there's an urgency to this, to this, to this item, Mr. Mayor. But if the, if this was so urgent, why then didn't you call an urgent council meeting to deal with this issue in confidential so that we deal with the issue and that it's over and done? But now again, lastly, I submit, since there's a lawyer's letter, you cannot deny the legal process. You cannot ignore the legal process. And you cannot act in contempt of the legal process. Even, even when you are informed like now, it will become more aggravating in a court of law that we have all acted against uh, the law 
if we were mindful of it. So I beg you, apply your mind, bring this item back, include the lawyer's letter so that we apply our minds to the lawyer's letter, and then we can all, then there's justice to the process. But whatever decision will be taken will be a just and fair and transparent decision. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Akar. I placed it once. That's good. Thank you. Um, speaker, um, I agree with some of the things that uh, count, uh, uh, Councillor Kante and Alderman um, Gierke has said, but I think they what they've said is in a totally wrong context. Um, I would uh, request that the letter be been read um, for one reason. We are now concerned about a letter, but we don't know what is contained in the letter. Ten minutes ago, I had uh, uh, I heard what is in the letter. Um, I think if we read the letter, we will understand what the problem is. What I've seen, what I've heard, the letter is not attacking the removal of the chair. The letter is not attacking the process. The letter is not um, complaining about um, not being heard. The, the letter doesn't dispute the right of the mayor to remove people. We all know it's like in brackets or in um, inverted commas. Um, the right of a mayor, it's a political sort of a decision. You, you, you remove a, 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 a chair if you want to or you don't. To it. You, you don't even have to have your reasons. It's not now go, I want to remove someone, and now I'm going to argue you with you and give you the opportunity and things. It's, it's a decision that the mayor takes. If I'm correct that this letter is not attacking any of the processes or procedures or the report or the decision, my understanding is the lawyer's letter says, you have defamed my name. I'm going to sue you for defamation. That is a personal thing between you two. That has nothing to do with counsel. Um, and that is why I feel we need to, to hear the letter. We need to understand what it is because it's very easy. I've done it hundreds of times in my life. You just, uh, as a lawyer, you just write the letter to people, say to them, that's, that's isn't what, that's what I'm going to do. If you don't stop what you're doing, and then you stop and nothing happens to it. If, 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 if the, the relevant person feels defamed, then it's a defamation case. You can't defama uh, uh, lie a charge of defamation against the a council. You do it against the person. And um, so, so, so this, this thing is not hurried through also. It has been on a, on, a, on a council meeting. It has been explained in committees and wherever it has been explained. So um, my feeling is that we, we should not fall into a trap to every time when there's a little bit of a difference in the thing, then we back out. If the mayor feels that he has, or the speaker feels that she has followed the procedures and has the right to do what they are doing, then they should continue and not be um, like every time you receive a, a lawyer's letter, back out. So um, my plea is that we, 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 we listen out the letter. And if, it, if the letter is, is attacking council or the processes and procedures and what we've done, then I agree, we postpone. Take it up and bring it back. But it has nothing to do with what is going on here. Why, why are we concerned about it? Thank you. Yeah. After the mayor, after the mayor, I will uh, grant your focus, then we can also go. Am I, am I on? Thanks. Uh, I'm going to touch on two things. Because there's also the sense uh, as if we we deliberately doing what we're doing. We also received it five minutes ago. 
it is not as if uh, we, we got this letter a week ago, so we, we, we sat on it. We got it five minutes ago, and that triggers us to make a decision now, because we, we've received it now. But I'm gonna go further. Be because of the climate we're under, everything we do, and uh, Alan Herica alluded to that, there are people on YouTube, uh, they would then also distort what they are hearing here. So based on that, colleagues, I truly believe in its law and its fact, all counselors must know what is contained for us to make a decision, informed decision, all counselors must. So because of that, we say what? And there is whoever published things on front page that are distorted, I will then question, and I'm going to agree with what they're saying. I want to be in terms of the content, and let us not read the letter because it will be on YouTube. And tonight we're going to get calls from Joburg, from Pretoria, because people have distorted this thing. All counselors, because I was going to say, we go and print that now. Everybody gets a copy. There's a caucus, but there are those who are online, those counselors. They are not ready to it. So, Madam Speaker, I would, I would then. With, with, I would then suggest that that letter must be contained to this item because the item is not going to change. That letter must be contained to the item. Councillors get it. Let me call a special meeting and we deal just with this item at a date. Uh, a, a set. We can even call a meeting within 24 hours because it's just this item. But then we all know that it is not in the public domain. Because if we read it now, it gets into the public domain. That I would suggest we can even call a meeting tomorrow morning or Friday. Where the speaker can decide. But we must be on standby to be called back to deal with this. My apologies to my caucus. Um, I am thank you. I'm not going to allow any more debate. I'm going to next week. Um, we will consult all the guidance for weeks. Um, we will speak to each other. Um, we've got Tuesday next week. Um, we have not had time to do that. Um, we have to do that. We have to do this for you. The same item. I'm saying that the other session things are not in the spendless item. And this can be finished to switch off. Mm -hmm. Madam Speaker and councillors and all councillors and all officials, I am saying this now for the hundredth time. We do not have to wait for diaries of the bees. We can meet for the talk at night. We don't have to wait for the bees or you have got that commitment in your committee. All we know is that nobody's in a council meeting after nine o'clock because there's no judge sits until nine or ten. Can call the meeting at 10 o'clock at nine. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. My husband will be on Tuesday. He has um, um, no change. We will inform you the date and time. The date is on Tuesday, the 2nd of August. The time will be communicated. Um, Councillors, we're going now on a break. Can we, yes, we got purpose and lunch. Can we be back at our stars? But we, if we come back, Councillors, before we go, Madam Mujerica, can you ask a brief reason it's sort here? And then uh, councillors will not come back to A1. When we A1 is in its totality going to be the only item of the special council meeting, then we're going to start with section B and refer to the executive manager. And I think you're on that. Do anybody understand? Councillors, can we get an indication, please? Can we get back by our stars, please? On the dock. We still have thousands and thousands of pages to go through.
Sorry, Era Era Yes, please. Yes, 
testing testing ma ikinu mo rin din ang kabuhat ng mga tubo testing 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 one two testing Can you know online work well? Hey, can you worry a course? Good job. Okay, Ms. Yeah, Okay, Chris, where are you on? See, I were on. I can't yell where you are. Thank you.
Can we just do a sound check? Maya, can you just, um, is everybody online? Let me first start there, Maya, before you do the sound check. Speaker, I can hear you from uh, it's quest from online. Yeah, but of course, Leicester Hounet years, um, I'm going to ask the mayor. DJ, 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 can you guys hear me? On Thank you, DJ, you DJ in the house. Don't worry, DJ. <laughs> Thank you. We're just going to do a roll call, Councillor Skippers. I've heard you. Um, Councillor um, Matika, Councillor Reiters, Rosina. On Sanga, Councillor Reiters, Speaker. Yes, Echo Dave, E Councillor. Who else is online? Councillor Cornelius. I can hear you, Speaker. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Thank you. So we will proceed with the meeting. Welcome back. Um, I just also need to apologize those those that are online on our Zoom platform or on YouTube. I need to apologize for, for the poor sound. I've received several messages from members of the community as well that our sound are very bad. So hopefully it's better now. The gremlin said now we are there in ge, in gesprung. Um, councillors, we will proceed with section B. Speaker. Uh, Alderman. Sorry, can I just uh, ask you uh, in a very, very friendly way, we have some challenges and problems and stuff. We have dealt with a lot of issues this morning up until thus far. The public is struggling to tune in. The next uh, batch of items will be uh, for the sake of compliance, Madam Speaker. I don't know. No, just out, just out, just out, please. Because I don't know why we prolong the meeting so much all the time. The it's reporting coming up and so on. So uh, uh, let us just be mindful of the fact because George has got another council meeting tomorrow. We need caucuses and so on. And don't let the mayor talk so much, please. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor. Uh, we had an offline discussion. Me and Councillor Gierke have raised that point with me to say, well, my David, to buy a prat. So, so we will see how it goes, um, Councillor, and, and if go, everything goes well, we will be done within the next hour. Um, mayor B1, that's the section 52, responsibilities of the Mayor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'm glad that uh, our Mujerica has raised this point, and I want to bring it and say that it, it is also something that needs to be discussed in the Governance Committee, that we start structuring how we deal with items, time-wise. Uh, Madam Speaker, time-wise, again, uh, I'm tabling this report uh, to Council in terms of my responsibilities contained uh, in the MFMA, Section 52, and uh, I'm tabling this for, for Council uh, to uh, debate, take cognizance, and uh, adopt. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, uh, Speaker. <laughs> Speaker, in my communications, I did indicate that uh, in the PMS part of the Section 52 report, would like to make one amendment so that the mayor tables the amended Section 52 report. So before the mayor formally tables, I request Speaker with the permission that you allow us to make just one amendment in the um, scores, if there is also the targets that we have. There. Thank you, Speaker. Before CFO, um, can you raise your question if you've got one? Yeah. Look, Alder Lady Lechava. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, speaker, ours is that we look at the report uh, uh, in terms of it, uh, in terms of um, the mayor's responsibility. However, where we had a bit of a, con um, we would like the mayor. On page 144, there are project codes and names. And we can see that some of the projects, they are 100% in spent in terms of 100%, some are 80. So what we would have liked is that, for instance, we are not privy all the others' um, um, parts. You can see in the financial, 
you get a background, a, a, a breakdown. Now here we find that you talk about donation and sponsor for sport equipment. Uh, they 99% women in business, Christmas campus. We would like to have those reports. Um, I mean, I think it's a right and a fair thing. And especially when it has been spent so that we can see that in terms of Christmas hamper, are they all gold? I'm just making an example in George or in Oatson only, or are they been going for all Mosul Bay and George and, and so forth? Because that is how it is. Just want to know. Those are projects, but we also want to know the details of the projects so that we are. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, that can be done. So when we deal with these matters again, then we have a, a breakdown. You may proceed, CFO. Thank you, Speaker and Councillors. So I think um, this report, the Section 52 report is a quarter report, but obviously now it is actually also a full year report. Um, we have uh, put in comments, etc. You know, under the various sections, but maybe at, at a high level um, to highlight that the capital budget, um, that the cash items on the capital budget has been spent by 92%. So um, I know during the year there were possible concerns raised at council meetings about the. My apologies, my apologies, CFO. I am a No, speaker, I can't see you. Sorry. You, you, you have allowed you know, the report to be debated. We have made the request to make an amendment so that the mayor can table the report, then it can be debated. Okay. Maya? Madam, Madam Speaker, thank you. The MM is correct. The amendment was made in MACO. So uh, if it was you, I think, uh, uh, Officer Sukweni, if you can just make that amendment, and then I would then just say, I then tabled the amended. Uh, section 52 report. Thank you. Amy, my apologies. I was under the impression that the CFO was going to do the amendments. Um, my apologies, Timbani. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker. The, the amendment is on page 159 at TL 33 under the column that says actual, which is 96. After our in own internal audit process, um, that figure of 96 changed to 132 just for record, because the one that will be going to public, it will then have 132 as the actual figure, not 96. That is the correction that we are making. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mayor. So you are now um, tabling the amended report as amended by Mbani. Correct, Madam Speaker, as per the powers vested in me. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, for record purposes, then we ask but also to include EPWP in your report. Uh, we, we, have, we have asked that in the process of this project to please um, forward us reports that are detailing in terms of, of those part of it, also P, P, EPWPs, how it's been, yeah. Yes, Amen. Uh, speaker, I understand where the councillor comes from, but the Section 52 report has got a prescribed format. So we, 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 we report in this format. However, we report separately on projects like PWP and so on. But then if it is proposed that everything else must be in the Section 52 report, it might uh, change or distort what is needed to be achieved by the 52 report, but um, if we can be allowed um, to do the 52 report as is as prescribed, but then agree on the um, timing on when must we report on EPWP or this, because we from time to time report to, to you on what is happening in EPWP or CWP or any other project that we have. Aya? Madam Speaker, we were nodding because uh, I fully understand where the council is coming from because the amendment is based on EPWP. So obviously it triggers, you know, other EPWP related matters. So we can have a different, but we understand it should be con uh, conveyed. 
Um, also, just to answer um, um, Mr. Manager, is that um, I don't think that we've changed the structure of the section 52. The only is just the things that emanate from it. Then it becomes a different, and then you can just say we are reporting based on what came out from the section 52. Thank you. Thank you. I'm um, sorry for the interruption previously, CFO. Yes, thank you, Speaker. So maybe just to highlight then on the capital expenditure side, the, um, the, the achievement on the cash elements, like I said, was 92%. Um, and then also to note that um, part of that- Can you the, just allude us to the page where you are speaking on? I'm talking on page 107. Um, there was a paragraph that we included there that I'm just highlighting to council. Um, you must also note that we also included in the capital budget to Irvin that George Municipality is in the process or has agreed to donate to Garden Route District Municipality that is going to be used uh, where the fire station is built on. The a transfer agreement has been signed. I say donate, I think there is actually an amount of 100 rand payable on each, but that consolidation process is just um, hasn't concluded yet on the 30th of June. Obviously, there is no um, detrimental financial impact to us, but those urban will then come onto our assets as soon as the legal process has been concluded. Then um, to, to perhaps also then take counsel to page 112, which is uh, um, which contains the you know the high level revenue and expenditure lines. Um, for purposes of you know not taking council's time too much, you will find there in the middle the the actually at the bottom of the screen as it is, you will find the year to date actual report that on the section fifty two. It's at the top of the screen now. Is eleven point six million. Just go down a little bit more. Okay, don't move. It. Just leave it as it is. So you'll see there. Um, towards the bottom of the screen, the year to date loss is eleven point six compared to a year-to-date budget of 11.3. Um, so we are in the process of just finalizing that. And of course, if there's any over expenditure, that will be reported as, as such with, with explanations going to the committees of council as necessary. But basically to indicate that the actual achievement for the year is very much in line with the budget for the year. Um, so I wanted to highlight um, that to council, and then if there are any other questions, then I'll be happy to respond as I can. Thank you. Any other questions? In the absence of none, page 97 is the recommendation. The council notes the quarterly report. Alderman Lamberjean. Yes, Madam Speaker, I would like to uh, second the mayor on this report. Thank you. What the uh, amendments? Thank you, councillors. Then we proceed to section C. We've dealt with C1, C2, and C3. We with C4 on page 186 to page 194. Final service delivery standard reports 2022 2023. Any questions on this report? The recommendation is on page 186 that the content of the report be approved. Maya? Madam Speaker, I propose to go with it because uh, as a district, we're having the coordinating function. The bulk of these standards and services are happening at the B, and it is stipulated as such. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I move that we. I... Accept the we accept the proposal by the mayor. Thank you, Alderman Lamberjean. Items, um, Alder Lady. I'm sorry, the Lady Chava. I, I apologize. I just wanted to ask, in terms of what you are proving, are we approving that this is our standard of of measuring ourselves? Is that what we are proving? Just for my clarity, please, and and everybody. CFO? Maya? Sorry, Madam Speaker, we didn't know to whom it was directed for, but you are correct, yes. 
there, there are still room for improvements because some turnarounds can be quicker. Thank you for that. Um, we're proceeding to item C5. You will find that on page 195 is the APEC biennial report on internal audit and performance management. It's on page 195 to page 206. Any questions? This report is also for noting. Any questions on that report? Nothing? Proceed, Maya. We go with the recommendations, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Second for that? Yes, Madam Mayor. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lampis. Alderman Lampagin. So we go with the recommendation as it is on page 207. Let the report be noted. Our next report is section D. That's a report from the Financial Services Department, D1. D1 is the implementation of the supply chain management policy for the year 1st of July 2021 to 30 June 2022. That report is from page 207 up to page 1038. The report is um, Alderman Lambergine. Yes, Madam Speaker, the report speaks for itself. Madam Speaker, we have dealt with all these reports on a monthly basis in our committee meetings, as well as we have approved most of these reports during the year, course of the year of 12 months. So therefore, I move that we accept this report, Madam Speaker. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Do we have a second of, uh, for Lambergine? Yes, Councillor. Uh, yes, yes, Councillor. Just a Councilor. question for the clarity, we have 211, page 211, where it speaks of quotations and it says the quotations, I think that those are the quotations that well, the general I want, I want it. But my concern is on the trip box that uh, uh, explained is not, not applicable when it speaks to the issues of PE. What does it mean? Is it saying that no PE companies in that? 11,488 companies. There are no PE companies that could work in this municipality, is what it's saying. If not, what does it mean? CFO. Thank you, Speaker. Um, Councillor, the, the reason why it is marked as not applicable is because the policy of council um, for quotations, which is any amounts below 30,000, it is just uh, considered on price. It is once you reach above 30,000 and you go into the informal and formal tender processes that BEE is then considered as part of the award, it gets a weighting. So the fact that it says not applicable doesn't mean that those 11,000 companies were not, not one of them were BEE compliant or had a rating. It just says that for procurement purposes that wasn't considered and therefore not recorded. Thank you, councillors. Any other questions? Alderman Lamberjean. I made a proposal that we accept this report. For noting. Um, do we have a seconder for, for Alderman Lamberjean? I second. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Lady Raona. D2 is the annual deviation report implementation of the supply chain management policy for the period of 1st July 2021 to 30 June 2022. Uh, you will find the report on page 1039 after page 1059, uh, Maya. Madam Speaker, we, we did discuss both these reports, D1, D1, uh, D2 and D3. And we do note that the fires, uh, firefighting services is always the, 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 the sticky thumb. But unfortunately, we don't have much control over that. If that bomber goes up into the air, we just have to pay. It's uh, part of those uh, sections that gives us the high deviations. And uh, in honor of former Alderman van der Wiffen, this was his favorite uh, items, I would propose that we go with both recommendations. Maya, just for me to be on the same page, are you talking about D2 and D3? 
Yes, ma'am, because uh, it, it speaks to the same thing, deviations at different times. And in both instances, uh, the thickest thumb is the firefighting services. Any questions before I ask for a seconder? Nothing? Then can I have a seconder for both? D2 was done by um, the mayor. And a seconder? Yes, Madam Speaker. I for both for D2 both. and D3. Yes, Madam Speaker. For Thank you, Maya and um, Alderman Lumberjean. D4, is the annual inventory count 30 June 2022? Corrections of quantities, page 1067 to page 1072. Maya? Madam Speaker, once again, uh, if uh, the, the CFO can just explain the, the fuel part. Uh, because in Mako we had the questions whether the fuel worked or what happened to the fuel, because in some places fuel walk. Thank you. See you Thank you, Speaker. Um, uh, Council, if you go to page 1072, you'll find the, that this is a result of the annual uh, inventory count. Uh, that first section there shows the variations found on the fuels. All those locations, all those lines are different tanks that is um, administered through the stores functions across the district. And you will see that the, the net uh, amount of the overs and the unders amount to 5,000 Rand. Um, I want to say that that is actually a very small amount if you consider that on a monthly basis, about a million Rand's worth of fuel goes through the operations of this institution, mainly at the roads department. And the reasons for the ups and the downs is that these um, dips are done through a manual dipping stick. So it's not very scientifically, you know, specific. And the, the size of these tanks, as explained by um, independent uh, specialists in the fuel area, is that fuel itself contracts and expands depending on weather. So they, they have an allowance for the same amount of fuel dipped today and if, even if there's no fuel um, uh, taken out of the tank tomorrow it might read differently if you if you dip it in at a different time of the day so there is an allowance for that type of variation and as i've said if you consider the quantity of fuel that is held within these tanks then the actual variation is very small and shouldn't be of concern to council and then the second table there is on all other stock that is not fuel related and again, very, very little um, differences. Most of it is boots that were old and the soles start perishing. So we have to write it off as an obsolete stock. So if you were to approve this item, it's basically for a write down of five and a half thousand rands worth of inventory um, so that we can make sure that the value of the inventory in our books are, matches the actual outside as counted by the auditors. Thank you, Sister. Thank you, CFO. Any questions? Councillors, the recommendation is on page 1068. There are two recommendations. The council approves the appropriate accounting treatment of inventory discrepancies as identified in the stock take. And then two, the council approved the write-off of inventory to the value of 5,560 rand and 60 cents. Maya? Madam Speaker, I propose that we go uh, with the recommendations. I've also now learned that I will only drive my car in winter. <laughs> Councillors, we proceed to uh, Section E, that's Report of Corporate Services Department. Our first report is on page 1073. Count uh, all the Lady Kratzinger. Um, yes, Madam Speaker, thank you very much for this. This item serves to inform and recommend to Council to only make use of accredited pension funds for employees um, until such time that the High Court gives a new ruling. And I propose that we adopt the recommendation on page 1074. Thank you so much. Any questions on this report? There are three recommendations on page 1074. It is there on the screen. So it is proposed that we go with it. By Council Alder Lady Kritzinger. Can I get a second? Madam Speaker, I'll second. Thank you, Councillor Swart. E2, Councillor Kritzinger. Thank you. This item is an update regarding the new staff regulations. Um, it's also regarding the government um, uh, Department of, of Corporate Governance Circular 12 um, regulations that had to be implemented on the 1st July in line with the Local Government Systems Act of 2000. Others asked that council um, that council should take note of this report um, 
um, as per page uh, 109 for the recommendation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions, Councillor? The court is stable. In the absence of none, can I have a seconder? Madam Speaker, I'll second. Thank you, Councillor Suar. E3, Elder Lady. Um, yes, Madam Speaker, thank you very much for this. This is a um, um, bargaining council appointment of a consultant regarding the EPWP. Uh, the bargaining council deemed it necessary to investigate the programs regarding legislation, policies, um, contractual and financial arrangements at local government level when appointing community members on to conduct EPWP and CWP work. So I thus want to propose that council adopt the recommendations as on page 1117. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, councillors? Maya? Madam Speaker, I'm going to be naughty and ignorant. I don't recall us having a CWP program. It's always EPWP. But other municipalities have got both. Yes. Yes. So there's something. The, we, the bees, the bees have got. Now, is the question is that only for bees? All right. Okay, colleagues, I'm raising this because then there's an opportunity for us as well to, to see if we can't benefit from both. Thank you. The guys are listening, Richard and Gladla, follow up on it. Thank you. Through the MN. Thank you. Councillor Tauti. Yeah. Speaker, uh, just to have the uh, mayor there, the CWP programs is not for municipalities, it's an NGO. It's, uh, but they must work within the municipal boundary and they can help the municipality. Madam Speaker, we're never too old to, to learn. That's why we both are the hut. Uh, thank you for that. So, councillors, the recommendation is in triple one seven. Can we go with it? Uh, can I just get a seconder, please? Thank Madam you, councillor Swar. I'll second. Um, elder lady is E4. Thank you. Double one two six to double one two eight. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This is also bargaining council circular six of twenty twenty two. We can we can all re remember the the resolution that this council took when the payment of danger pay came to council, and it was quite an issue through all the municipalities in the district regarding um staff members that were um basically responsible for duties during COVID um. So we, we took that resolution um, to wait for guidance from SOGA as to the way forward. So the bargaining council has now asked all municipalities to submit their lists of employees, essential and non-essential, that were on duty during the COVID-19 lockdowns. The information is needed for negotiations on a possible cons compensatory framework. So I thus want to ask council to please note this report, the content of this report um, as per page 1126. Thank you so much. Thank you, all the lady. Do we have a, a second for that report? I second it. Thank you, Councillor Cronia. E5. Okay, Madam Speaker, this one goes about the category categorization and the, and the wage curve. This item um, is a report to Council on the status of, of the um, categorized categorization. <laughs> Model and wage curve for um, in local government. Salga requested input and comments from the Western Cape municipalities, and I need council to adopt the following recommendations as per page 1130. But I want to also add the following to the recommendations um, that the linkage to the finalization of job evaluation and performance management and notch increases as rewards um, um, as opposed to an um, automatic process, then two implementation of the categorization um, and the wage curve to be flexible to allow for the phased in approach instead of a once off implementation date um, in the event of a change in the categorization. Then we want to three that we support the review of the categorization um, of the municipality on an annual basis. Four, that the wave curve be, be adjusted annually in line with the cost of living adjustments um, um, and agreed to as agreed by the parties. And then five, that SAGA considers including factors of total revenue and total uh, population to the model used um, for district municipalities when calculating the weighting. And then six, in the case of recategorization based on fundamental changes in its economic status, 
the application must be approved by council. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Council have amended now that recommendation on page 1130. There's already three. So what she was referring to as one, two, three, four, five, and six, it's in fact four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Councillors, can we can we go with that? Can you please just provide the administration with the changes, the amendments? Councillor Cronier? I second it with the recommendations and the amendments. Amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cronier. Our next report is E6, Report on Gender Mainstreaming, page 1155. Madam Speaker, um, we are currently facing a massive challenge to, to eradicate gender inequality and gender-based violence, um, violent violence crimes. Garden Roots District Municipality was chosen as a flagship municipality in the Western Cape, um, and a gender equality action plan has been developed at, for implementation. This item serves to update and inform council of the actions taking place to date, and I thus ask that Council consider and approve the report before us. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Questions? Oh, the lady, Yachaba. Um, thank you, um, Honorable Speaker. And uh, uh, thank you, Elder Lady. Thank you for that report. However, I think for us, um, now that we're going to be going into the um, whether it's for checking boxes or ticking off boxes, I think we need to be able to change our mindset um, because at the same time, I'm also witnessing that this thing, the, the notion of agenda equality and the notion of agenda mainstreaming, it doesn't exist, it's only in paper. I would presume <coughs> there, there is in that plan whereby we talk about the the development, it's um, down at the plan, there is um, uh, that council is going to have a, a, council, a, a council workshop because I think we should be doing that. For us, just to have these things on paper, but we do not, um, we do not practice it, I don't think it's the right thing because gender mainstreaming, gender equity, it starts with how we as council, we do things. I'll give an example. Just to give an example, that you um, from even from our parties, um, you take out and you where you remove. There is a, a process of of removing or, or, or taking somebody out, like the um, uh, councillor is it Barker? Then you remove it, but you not also <clears throat> uh, bring in a councillor who is a, a woman. <clears throat> so now you look at those things and then you see the consciousness that is not there, that, that the balance of, of, of forces between male and female in these spaces is important. Now that gender equity, that gender mainstreaming is actually addressing that. So for me, I'm saying it's good that we're going to have that, um, we have to have that gender developmental workshop for counselors so that we also be aware and conscious that we are first the, 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 touch, um, the touch bearers of such nature. But if we are going to make it as a tick box, it's going to be problematic in society as well, because we must be able. So for me, I'm saying that the gender mainstreaming, the gender policies, let us leave it. Society needs us at this time as leaders to leave this gender mainstreaming and gender policies because Gender-based violence starts there. It starts when, when the, the, the genders, they are not giving itself equality. So all I'm urging, let this be not just a ticking box for us, because it will be unfair for us to be sitting here as women, as women counselors, just for us to tick this box. What is correct, it must be, it must find its expression in the right way. Thank you very much, the lady. Before you, Maya. Um, just for record purposes, Councillor Cornelius asked to be excused, um, Rihanna, and then Councillor Matika. Councillor Matika, you may proceed. Councillor Matika, your hand is raised. May I proceed? 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Elder Lady Lichaba covered me at the end because I was going to want to get a, the examples of where is it just a tick box exercise and nothing happened. But now in the end that she's made that example about Councillor Barker, I just want to add, Madam Speaker, that PBI did the same. Mayor, given over here a can of worms with my as a belief. Um, Councillor Matika? Councillor Matika? Councillor Matika, going once. Councillor Matika? Okay, I think that is an old end. That's not me saying that is bona fide. Moni has just said it's an old end. Um, councillors, uh, it seems as if Councillor Matika can't hear me. Uh, can we proceed with section F? Um, I've uh, got only before we proceed a uh, proposal. Can I have a second as well for for E six? Second. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Cronia. Section F reports from Community Services Department F one, page double one six nine to page double one seven nine. Councillor Dai. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, uh, if there's no one for the problem with the report, we'll, uh, I'll just recommend that we take note of the report and then we also go with the recommendation number two. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Councillor. The, re the recommendations are there on the screen, Councillor. It says the second one that Councillor proof of the measures that fire services intend to implement. Are there any questions on this report? Maya? Uh, Maya, before you, um, Councillor Mayran. Councillor Mayran, you may proceed. Yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll second. Yeah, I thought you wanted to ask a question, maybe. I've been called into order by the deputy. Well, okay, uh, all the, all the lady Lechaba. Um, thank you. All I wanted to, to allude is that we're hoping that these, um, these measurements have been done as, as quickly. I know, okay, but it's, it's not going to be, but at least because we are getting starting fires for some reason, the, the, the climate has changed. Sometimes then we have hot times, this fire breaks, all these things, they need to happen so that we are able to get the revenue out of this, um, this stream. So we hope that at least by the next three months, we will have some kind of uh, update. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Councillor and I. And it was seconded, the recommendations were seconded uh, on page 1169 by Councillor Mayran. Um, if two, this is the item where Councillor Tauti has declared his interest. Is there any progress report with regards to the activities of the district food pantry? Yeah. Page 1180 to page 1198. Maya? Madam Speaker, I just uh, want to uh, bring under Council's attention that in Mako, because of every time there's always different uh, views on the food pantry, although we have the reports in front of us, uh, we did resolve that probably uh, at some stage we need the manager of the food pantry just to come and make a presentation so that we can get out of the horse's mouth because we are aware of political challenges and other people are aware of uh, other challenges. We need to hear from him where the challenges are. Thank you, Maya. I see in the chambers we do have the, the manager. He's sitting there at the back. Um, are the lady the Chava? Okay, no, uh, thank you. I think the mayor has just alluded to that, that what we need, because I think we did say it last time, uh, it's just in terms of uh, let it be noted. We said we want to know the impact it has on our people on the ground. For instance, if there are soup kitchens, how many do they receive? How many of that? How many households that get this thing? So that we can see the impact of the value, the value of the impact that we give. But coming to the report, we are very, um, if you look at the report, I'm not going to talk about it. I just want to talk about pictures. Can we please refrain from using pictures is very offensive for me and my caucus. It is very offensive for me and my caucus when we make reports of that kind. 
that exactly that one that you find children and then because you are giving them food with their status whether they are in poverty but for us that is not acceptable that is not what we want to see it should be rather we, we look at pictures of better but that to us is unacceptable you can't be having pictures of young people young children uh, as if they are begging it's not correct that is not correct we, we take offense on that it is not correct for us maya <clears throat> thank you madam speaker i i and i was saying you know we a political view uh, and another view would, would, would always differ and uh, they also say a picture speaks a thousand words and and based on that i i can understand the underlying tone on that there are only black kids uh i'm, I'm just making an example there are only there are only black kids uh on on that picture now then our homework then should be would we feel comfortable if it was a whole a rainbow picture would that have made us feel comfortable okay then that's fine then that's fine but uh it's it's, it's noted all the lady in die thank you speaker i just want to add what uh alderman is saying and even i hear the mayor says it is rainbow but we must also be careful for the pictures we are allowed to put those pictures without the parents are the parents of the kids give us the permission Thank you, Speaker. Alderman Gierke. Yeah, <clears throat> Speaker, uh, I just want to, on the on the recommendation or the request by the mayor for a presentation, the report that we have in front of us uh, is basically self-explanatory. The detail that should be in there, according to the report, is in there. I am not opposing your uh, your your request. I am, however, not with a presentation uh, i want to ask let us rather allow the gentleman of the food pantry to give us a report from his site a written report included into the items so that we have a broader understanding and that we also have on the record uh you know their side of the story uh, uh you know we 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 we, we cannot just invite people as and when to come and do presentations. We have respect for the food pantry and the work that they do, but let us get a, a comprehensive report of what is being done in the entire region that we also know what we contribute towards and what we are funding, Mr. Mayor. I don't see it as an insult. I mean, you we have even not been notified of the presentation uh, by the gentleman, but I have no objection, but I say, the presentation is not going to do the job for us. We work on reports in this council, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, um, councillors. The councillor is still on the floor. Proceed, councillor. But Maya, um, proceed, Maya. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, there must have been a miscommunication. Uh, uh, in in Maker, we said that we need to make the arrangements uh, for Carl and his team to come and do this. But now that you've raised the issue that we, we deal with reports and that is sufficient enough for us. But for me, I'm also looking at it as a political point of view, you know, because I might have a counterpart because one of the struggles is that some of the other people are trying to make some of the dreams of the So I don't know that uh, whether Esauqua have paid or Beto have paid, and those rumors are in the air. You know, and if I engage them, they support the food pantry. So I don't rate them. So Carl would be, or the, the team would be in a better position to say that no things are going well, but we have to drag Garden Root to come to the agreement. It's, it's those kind of things, but we, we fully understand 
uh, the concerns raised by the councillors, the Poppy Act, and all of those things. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Speaker. Yes, Alderman. Yeah, Madam, uh, Mr. Madam Speaker, Mr. Mayor, that is exactly what I say. Exactly, we know the dynamics here. And we are being accused by the public outside that uh, throughout the region, they say you're only looking after George with the food bank. We don't see it in the footprint in our areas and so on. This is why I say, and this is a submission to this council a request, let our report come. It's not an insult to the gentleman this year. If we have on record that X municipality doesn't pay and contribute, then we have on record. Then we know what to do and we know what which action to take uh, in terms of the way forward. But if we're going to do a presentation now, this is going to be partial, it's going to be disappear. We have nothing to work on and we cannot go even back to the municipalities because we don't have anything to work on. We also need to understand the proportion of, of food that's given to soup kitchens according to the amounts that's availed to in that municipal jurisdiction and so on. So that is the rationale behind this, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, thank you. Can you switch quickly off? No, Mayor, you can go. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I just want to put it on record now that the gentleman is here. We as the GRDM, we 200% support uh, the food pantry and uh, whatever culminates uh, going forward, we will deal with that. You just reminded me, uh, Alderman, that the far-reaching areas, we, were all, we always had that concern that the far-reaching areas, you know, might struggle to come here. And I know that Gerard Otto at one stage also uh, brought the idea that we might acquire a truck, you know, that would assist the food pantry uh, to, to, to get to the far reaching area. So the ball is on the roll and the partnership is solid. Thank you. We accept the report, yes, in front of us. With, without oh, the faces. Hi, I'm still the chairperson. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, without the faces. Alderman, here I Yeah, speaker, just for to conclude this item, are we then in agreement that a comprehensive report should serve at the next meeting or at an appropriate time? Is that what we say? Who are you, MM? Um, thank, thank you, uh, Speaker. Um, maybe for for progress, the report apparently has been accepted, but it's quite comprehensive, Councillor. The report that is in front of you, it uh, it's detailed in terms of what the pantry is doing. It's probably maybe the style and the presentation of the report that is giving you maybe challenges. But if you read the content of the report, it's a uh, well uh, written. It tells you what is happening about food gardens, about um, um, training, about everything. So maybe what we can request is that the other report that must come probably must be presented in a different style that you are familiar with, because it would be unfair for the compilers of the report if you say they must come with a comprehensive report when this detail has been presented in front of you. So. We'll take note that uh, council has engaged with the report and uh, um, adopted it, and then has made certain um, um, comments or requests on the next report, including the style in the presentation of the report. Thank you. Yeah. Lastly, in terms of the pictures and everything that goes with it, uh, the Garden Group District Municipality is the key major partner with the group entry. Please my picture in. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So can we proceed? MM, MM. Uh, Speaker Indy, may call an invitation was extended as well for councillors that have time to visit the, the pantry and see for yourselves what is happening. Maybe ask the questions you want to ask in the um, understand how their operations may be differ from other institutions doing the same thing. Thank you, can we proceed? If five, um, if three, what is our favorite 
monkey person, monkey box, Mr. Otto, can we just give a brief, brief overview, please? Speaker, yes, uh, I was COVID and now it's monkey box, it doesn't stop. I hope you can hear me. If, if you will allow me to just share my screen. Wait, right, I was a little bit closer. Sorry, uh, please just, just pause for a moment, MM. The gentleman that was invited to be excused and to say thank you to him for, for coming. My apologies. Thank you, Mr. Van Blair. We will come and visit you. Gerard, you've got three minutes. Speak, I'll be quick. First of all, just for the COVID, so you can see where we are with, in terms of COVID at this point in time. We're on 46 cases in the district. It looks good. Um, we've got no admissions of COVID-19 patients anywhere in, in seven district hospitals. So in terms of COVID, it looks good. Thank I have, you. Can we have one meeting, please? I've requested the Secretariat to provide you with these slides. I'm not going to go into detail, but yesterday at MACO, the, the mayor asked a couple of questions. So I decided just to give a little bit of background in terms of monkeypox. Um, first of all, I can just indicate to you because I want to give you the good news. I, I spoke to... The person who's the coordination person, Dr. Wayne Smith, in the provincial uh, sphere of the Department of Health. Um, he's the one that actually works with Dr. Keith Klute. And I asked him, can monkeypox give us a way for of a lockdown, a level four of a lockdown? And he said he will beat his pension. It will not happen. So he's been there quite a couple of years. I think his pension is worth a lot. So I don't. Uh, I, I take his word for that. Um, what I've done is I've just included a couple of slides. I'm not going to go through all the detail, but I want to just highlight to you is a couple of the red parts. If you say, how does monkeypox spread from person to person? Other than with the COVID-19 and, and influenza diseases, it's close contact. So you have to touch, physically touch the person. That, that's very, very important. And I must also um, uh, note to you that with COVID, we had asymptomatic people. So if somebody might have had COVID and he could transmit COVID via the air and you didn't even know that that person had COVID. But monkeypox, you'll see the lesions. It's, it's clear that you can see this person has got monkeypox. So uh, it, it also makes the, the, the spread of it a little bit more difficult. And then um, lastly, I might also want to um, bring this to your attention. I know the question was asked, but why then? Would the World Health Organization declare monkeypox as a public health emergency of international concern? Now, Dr. Wansmith also alluded to this this morning when I spoke to him. He said, you must remember, it was mostly African countries that got this in the big past. Now it's spread outside of the norm. So there's more countries that have now shown that, they, that there's the monkeypox outbreaks there. And for the World Health Organization to be able to assist those countries in terms of their regulations, they need to declare it as a public health emergency of international concern, that actually opens up uh, the, the doors and uh, takes away the red tape so that they can assist those countries. Because the last thing I wrote down there is existing vaccines can slow down the spread of this virus. So they do it for two reasons. One is to create awareness, and the second one is to specifically unlock the red tape so that um, they can assist those countries to prevent this from becoming a pandemic. That's from my side. Thank you. Maya. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, uh, we accept the report, uh, but uh, I might probably be out of order, but uh, Madam Speaker and colleagues, uh, the mere fact that monkeypox were discovered on the African continent, you know, that, that gives a connotation already. I support the city of New York that has petitioned the health organization World Health Organization to change that term. They must call monkeypox something else. They must come up with a new surgical term because I'm not a monkey on this continent. Thank you. Thank you, um, Madam um <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, councillors, the report, Councillor and I. Is there another another end? Before we go to the recommendation, it's just to note the report, Alderman. Yeah, sorry, uh, Councillor and I. Uh, speaker, we accept the report. It's fine, as always, we do accept the 
credentials of uh, reports from Mr. Uh, Mr. Otto. But maybe uh, just one solid concern. If we talk about an outbreak, now it may come in a bigger scale as what we see at the moment. Now we've seen in COVID and so on. I'm just raising another point. I don't want the resolution. I'm just putting it down, Mr. Mayor. I am very much concerned about the availability of ambulance services on the ground. I have engaged Mr. Otto. Uh, I was supposed to bring most probably a motion to this council because there are various options that could be considered. But if we face an outbreak, but even now that we don't face an outbreak, we only have three ambulances in George. You know, it's from the Western Cape Yacht Department. Now, you're serving a community of 220,000 people at the moment without the updates of your of your uh, uh, recent uh, stats essay. And I think it is something, that's an item that needs thorough interaction and engagement and on a bigger scale, attention uh, to the powers to be. Because it is a given that mostly poor people are using the government ambulance services. Rich people or wealthy or middle class people can afford to pay an ear of 24 or so on. I know it's not suitable to this item now, but it's just something that I want you to consider, maybe take it to a next level, discuss it and so on. There are only, th I'm just talking about George now. There are only three government ambulances in the whole of George. And I am being told if one is on its way to the to the airport, to a helicopter or airplane, to uh, deliver some sick patient there, then there's only two for the entire George. And uh, this is a serious thing, Mr. Mayor, that we need to discuss this and that we need to come up with options uh, to make uh, you know uh, ambulance services more accessible to the people. There are options. I don't want to go into the options now, but uh, I think as a government, we need to address this. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Alderman Gierke. I see the mayor is nodding his hand. So thank you very much, Mr. Otto, as well. There are no other hands and questions. We note the report, Councillor and Dine. Do you have a seconder for that? Yes, I second the mayor's speaker. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. We proceed. G1. This is reports from roads and transport. There's only one item on page 1204 to page 1210. Um, Alderman Mr. Speaker, yesterday I made a mistake. I announced that uh, Madiba Drive was busy uh, in the process of being tarred. I jumped the gun. That is not the facts. There's still too, many, uh, too much moist in the, in the gravel. And then I want to uh, propose that we adopt the report as is 17.1 of G1. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Do we have a, a seconder for, for? I'll second. Thank, thank you, you Councillor Wachbar. Section H. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, Mayor. Madam Speaker, I said in my mayoral communications that road is open. And, and now let me say this if, 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 if Councillor Terblanche is correct, Municipal Manager Monday given Stratu. Officials, officials must feel free to engage with us on the spot. If we're missing something, officials must, must raise and say, Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, uh, there's a comma missing there, uh, then it won't read billions, then it will read millions. I am embarrassed because I was then expecting Mr. Daniels to, to when we were engaging on my report to say that Mr. Mayor, just a correction, we jumped the gun and I would eat the humble pie. It's human to make mistakes. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. But before you, before you, Amy. Mm -hmm. No, speaker, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> the the road is open, Mr. Mayor, you are right. You were, you were invited to the opening of the road. The road is in use. Here's the issue. 
Here's the issue, Mr. Mayor. Because of the weather conditions and the material that is used, it's been open for now as a gravel road, and the public was informed. So they're using it. Once the conditions are right, it will be tired as it was before. So the road is open. Uh, please, it, there's no confusion about that. And it's being used. It's been reported as such even in the papers. Amen, what, thank you for the clarity. Sorry, Amen. sorry <laughs> what is the confusion? No, the, the councillor said yesterday, he said the road is tired already. That's the mistake he made. So he corrected himself to say the road is actually opened as a gravel road now. It will be tired very soon. Thank you, Mayor. So many parties. Mr. Daniels, my apologies, but next time speak English. Thank you. <laughs> so just to be clear, Mayor, the road is open, but it's a gravel road. Okay, yes. Yeah, um, Speaker, Mayor, the Sika Mari Feinskraft. Thank you, Councillor. So we go with that report. Um, Section 8, Planning and Economic Development. H1, proposed turnaround marketing strategy for GRDM resorts. Um, uh, Madam Speaker. Yep, Councillor. Yeah. On the 15th of June, there was a workshop. Uh, a workshop take place uh, here in the council chambers where it was discussed uh, on the name changing um, of the Colorstorp uh, Spa to Colorstorp Hot Springs. And after that, uh, uh, a, market, a marketing strategy was, was internally developed uh, by uh, our GRDM team uh, to uh, increase the awareness uh, as well to increase the occupants and uh, and, and due to that, it will also increase uh, the incomes of our resorts. Um, so I will, I will uh, then uh, propose that we go over the recommendations uh, as set in that uh, in this item. Councillor Stian, come. You don't want to add anything. Speaker. Income. I know it's a hot topic in Kanala, but for the moment, I'm not going to add something. What I will do, though, is I'm going to remind the whole council of our strategic session that we're going to find finalization on the land claims issue regarding Carlet Store, and that we need to sort it out because it's becoming a hot topic for us. We go ahead, we change the name, we do a new strategy, everything is fine. But we don't go to the root of the course to say, okay, we're going on as to what we decided on the strategic session. There's no feedback on that land plan, which we discussed in April. That's all I'm saying. Because I'm covering lots of questions in Kanalan for Garden Group regarding the land plan. Little bit on the name change, but most of it on the land. Thank you, Councillor Leeds. Uh, Councillor Swart. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, read through the report, and there's a couple of questions that I have, but in the interest of time, we'll deal with that later. It's just on the taglines, page 1221. If you look at it, where they say the Swatra uh, Caravan Park, the tagline that they suggested can relax experience calming lake views and the aroma of the ocean I just feel like aroma is the wrong word to use there i know it's semantics but aroma is usually something that refers to spices and stuff like that so we need to look at something different for for that you know, maybe i don't know perfume or smell invigorating smell or something like that because you know we, we're trying to attract people from overseas and if we have grammatical errors like that we might look like mochus Thank you, thank you, um, Councillor. So, um, Maya, Herman, did you take note of that? The aroma, Maya. Thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we 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 cannot not respond to the the land claims issue. Indeed, there has been land claims, but I also want to say to Council and and through you, MM, 
We just need the finalization. I am aware that uh, Advocate Matekeni and my chief of staff uh, did engage uh, the land claims uh, commission regarding those claims and there were preliminary answers given to us. We're now just waiting for the finalization of it, but it needs to be to be to be sped up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Maya. Councillor and I, can we? No. Alderman? No. Oh, sorry, sorry, Councillor. Speaker for the most ANC would like just to add on on this that uh, <clears throat> we don't agree with the elimination as it stands and taking back way to the strategic planning session. But what we are adding just before we we, we, we maybe agree or not, but we'd like to see some of these pockets that we're talking about, even if we go on site visit, if it's possible, so that we we are informed when we take these decisions. It could be that everyone, because of its land, you know, the value of land, we don't want to let go. Kandi is just fallow land. Councillor, you are talking on the next item. Next item, yes. Jay, 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 is not to buy a house, Jay, buy a house, H2, H2, we're coming oh. there now. Can we first just just um, finish this one? Um, Alderman? Oh, uh, switch off the mic, I believe, Councillor. Thank you, yes, thank you very much, Speaker. In terms of H1, this uh, uh, item that was uh, proposed by Councillor Wolfgang, I would like to second, but with the recommendation by Councillor Swart in terms of the smell or the aroma. Yes, well. with the amendment, yeah, yes. with the changing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So now we're going to your item, Council um, MM. Thank you, Speaker. The item on the proposed alienation of certain council properties, H2, is withdrawn, Speaker, exactly to afford councillors the opportunity to do site visits first to the properties. Thank you, MM. H3, status report on GRDM accreditation level one business plan. 1248 to 1260. Councillors, as a Bliffman, we're just late in the day. Alderman Lampis. Yes, speaker. Uh, this report, speaker, speaks to the status report uh, on the guard of the accreditation level one business plan and the submissions we've made to the Western Cape uh, Department of Human Settlements. Uh, Speaker, if I can just say that um, we we have a MO, MOA in place with the Western Cape Department, and uh, in the body or the contents of this report, uh, Speaker, there's quite a lot of information in terms of uh, the integrated human settlements that we are embarking on in this, in this region. Uh, what I can also say is, Speaker, there's quite a lot of information in this item, valuable information in terms of human settlements. Uh, more especially for us serving on the bees, so that we can go to our bees and, and inform in terms of what is happening in the garden route uh, with regards to human settlement. And on that note, Speaker, I would like to recommend that we accept the uh, recommendations on page 1248 uh, for this item. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Lamborghini. I see. Do I have a uh, second? I would like to second, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. All the lady I own now. The next one is the formal update of social housing delivery status own haven housing company. That's H4, page 1261 to page 1267. Yes, Speaker. This is What? I proceed. Right. Uh, speaker, yes, this, this, this item also speak for itself and also this item is also um, linking up with the, the previous item uh, in terms of uh, social housing, the lovely status, and also with regards to the um, own even housing company that is explained um, in, this, in this report. Uh, speaker, I don't want to propose because maybe the mayor just also want to mention something or speak on this report, mayor. Mayor? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I just want uh, to emphasize, you know, sometimes we don't give credit when credit is due, or we say things when people are retired, and then only then do we sing their praises. This department is doing a sterling job. 
and uh, uh, we see it in their reports and so on. And I was actually even saying yesterday in Mako, we need to make a noise with every milestone we achieve uh, with, within this department, because we must remember we are a pilot as a district uh, within this space. So everybody is looking at us and we need to make people aware when we uh, achieve some of these milestones. And even yesterday in the discussions as well, uh, it comes to uh, the issue raised uh, by, by uh, the opposition uh, where something leaked out of their caucus that we're gonna follow suit, uh, that even with these kind of projects, we need to have on-site visits with all these housing projects and then visage exchanges from province to us, from national to us, where are these, uh, uh, these, these pockets of land? But to Brajowell and Masims and the other interns, well done and keep it up. Mayor, uh, thank you. Just to add also to that, um, I'm the chairperson, um, provincial chairperson at Salga for human settlements. And uh, me and Mr. Joel has already started to work together. Um, so that's why I've asked um, the MM if he can be our representative when we go into these working groups. Um, so between the two of us, we will, we will make it happen. Proposal and a seconder. Alderman Gerke. Yeah, can I uh, just ask the uh, the earth, urban, uh, there's one in Muscle Bay and one in George, 26823. Where about is that uh, situated? Uh, further speaker. Mr. Joe. Uh, oh, Everybody hear me? Oh, okay, I dialed it twice. Okay, it's just less than, it's just behind us, next to this building. F26823 is a site that was uh, that's owned by the TRDM, and it's in a state of actually uh, advanced degradation. Then 3823 uh, is in Mossel Bay, next to the fire station. Thank you. Now, Alderman? Speaker, now, uh, it's fine and uh, accepted, uh, we, because the point was that uh, when we develop on the scale and uh, the way we propose, or it has been proposed to the public, that we must look into the uh, integrated human settlements plan to integrate communities, uh, you know, to uh, to make provision for all types of races and classes in those type of developments. Uh, and a strong point here is that uh, we must just do away with this thing that uh, people of color are just thrown somewhere at uncomfortable places close to downhills and what have you we see it around here by us now you know where people are really grappling when it when it's raining and when there are storms and so on uh, so now we are satisfied uh, just the last question how many units do you foresee on this specific piece of land <clears throat> we have asked our partner on haven to give us what we call a conceptual development framework Arising out of that is going to give us the yields and the quantities. Um, without holding us to that, in, in the, the, the approval, the status is general zoning, status of the zoning of that site. It will, it's actually limited to four story walk ups. <clears throat> However, if you want to push it up with the intensification to five, uh, five, five stories, you would have to apply to the George municipality. We've already discussed it with them. Potentially, we're looking at between 180 to 220 on that side, if, if uh, the rezoning is approved, if the desification is Thank you, thank you very much. Um, can we go with the recommendations, councillors? It's on page 1262, there's quite a few. It's from page it's from page 1262, and it proceeds on to page 1263. Alderman Lamberjean. Madam yeah, Speaker, I so move that we accept the recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Lady Kurt. Thank you. I second the proposal. Thank you, Madam. Councillors, we proceed to H5. Um, that is on page 1268. It's upgrade relating to targeted municipal and state properties for affordable housing program. Alderman Lamberjean. Yes, Madam Speaker. This 
item also speaks for itself and also it's uh, emanating from these the two previous items as well so it's uh, they complementing one another so i propose that we accept this report as well thank you before i ask for a second are there any questions on that on that specific item yeah you can see on the screen um what are we looking at um mr joel these are just, it's a rundown of the different sites. Uh, this is the site that Councillor, you know, uh, what Harike was asking about. It's just to show you the aerial view and, and the fact that from integration point, you know, uh, and links to other like commercial and industrial areas as well as cafeterias and schools and, and, and good road networks. This is just to demonstrate that. If you go quickly to the next one, this one is the one in, in Mossel Bay. There is an existing, uh, you know, uh, you know, a fire station next to it, but a lot of planning has to happen on this one. And then uh, that's uh, the one in, uh, I think, Reebok uh, in Mossel Bay, owned also by GRDM. And we're already talking of co-developing that site together with uh, the Mossel Bay municipality based on an agreement that council delivered some time back. <clears throat> and that's another one in Mossel Bay. Uh, which it's part of your, our 30-year timeline going ahead. It is to co-develop these and make them to be in a state of preparation. But F26823, we can develop possibly in four to six months' time. So that's the one that the MM was saying earlier. That could be the first, actually, uh, pocket that we can develop. Next one. The others are, are really uh, owned by province. We have already, um, you can just flip through all of them. We have already... Uh, made a formal application to province and and to try and uh <clears throat> and get these sites they are in your pack they describe actually and you can see the location they are in inner town areas which makes it easier for the argument put by councillor Harike of integration people working close to work they walk to work instead of having to come from Pembalay to or far away areas you know to try and save one transaction cost and there you can see the, the essence of going into an already developed area of the town. So the, really, the, this can talk to integration. This is a very exciting site. It's owned by Public Works. It's in a biodiversity area. It's next to the hospital in George. And uh, this site has got, uh, has got people who have invaded it. There's about two or three people because the state is neglected, you know, and, and stay, is staying there is a problem because now uh, people, they sit there, without paying anything. So we want to redevelop. Even the people that are there can be accommodated because even a pensioner can come in into social housing. So we're looking at getting this from the from the state and then we've already contacted the inter-ministerial committee for that. Quickly go to the next one. I think that was the last one. So if we get those sites, we can relate to the 30 year you know, development horizon. Thank you, sir. So just for my own clarity, the last ones that you were talking about, uh, we don't own it. It's the province. Province and national. And, and actually linking to social housing. In terms of the Social Housing Act and the Municipal Systems Act and Municipal Finance Management Act, these allow for transfer of stock from one arm of government to the other without attracting any cost. That's the beauty about it. So when you have to redevelop it, you don't have to factor in the cost of developing. You get the cost for the bulks as well as the savings the size from the state. And then the top structure is based on the restructuring grants that we will get from the SHRA. And this is being done in tandem with the government agencies like the Social Housing Regulatory Authority, which provides operating and capital grants for the, for the capital component. Maya? Madam Speaker, I want to, uh, I want to lobby the councillors, and I want to just plant the seed here. Our property next door, whatever we do, you know, with whatever type of uh, plans, um, student accommodation, flats, whatever you name it, I want to lobby to say that the first floor, the ground floor, can we not take the political wing there? The council chambers, uh, caucus rooms, uh, section 79, 80 offices, and the rest activities that would pay for the building itself. And then this chambers, the MM can then decide you need offices or whatever, theater, 
but let's take the political wing away from the administrative wing. It's just it's just a plant, a seed I'm planting. The uh, mayor, it, it can be done. The issue of mixed use, but given the site is actually less than a hectare. I mean, it's less than one hectare. It's zero point five. Sorry, it's it's actually not uh, as big as as where you would actually the yields will be up. However. However, having said that, we need to be careful. Dealing with public or social housing means when people see a councillor sitting in, a, in an office within a building, they will walk into there. That's been the experience. So the idea is to try and, and sort of separate actually roles so that the municipality is not seen as the, although technically we're the owner, because we're the one who have partnered with that housing company. I think we're going to make it difficult for them because people, when they're being evicted, Councillor Lambertine, please make me a chance, please. I mustn't be evicted, that kind of thing. So we try to avoid that, but thank you. Maya? Madam Speaker, there's a reason they call me memory, I think very fast. And I accept that, and Councillor Lichaba have just indicated she's experienced that. Our parking lot here at the back, our parking lot, we can also go up there. We do the same, and then CFO, we go up. On our parking lot, you guys continue parking at the bottom and we take the political wing there and we do some other stuff on, the, on our parking when we still on separate sides. Can somebody say Tamak? Thank you. No, let us not understand, but it's taken. It's supporting me in closer. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. I think um, Mr. Joel will come back to us. Um, to see if that is is possible, um, Lampis. We, we Madam Mayor, ask. You see the beauty of having a housing company that you work with. Uh, these excellent proposals that uh, uh, these excellence that the mayor is posing, you can start actually extending it to the housing company and say, can we have mixed use, in which underneath you will have parking and then you can have actually office blocks. And then on top, I mean, we have seen some of these things in areas like Canada and Holland. They do it exactly like the mayor has said, whereby there is mixed use because land is limited, but because of the location. However, the access ways here are, are a bit of a challenge, but it's something maybe through a feasibility we can look into. Thank you. Thank <coughs> you, Mr. Mr. Joel. Omla, please, can we go with it? Yes, Mr. Speaker, we can. I propose that we go with it. Thank you. Thank you, all the ladies. Madam Mayor. I second that, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Councillors, um, section I, um, notion of motions is none. Uh, section J, notice of motions is none. Section K, our enclosed session. So, councillors and um, the public, we are now at the end of our open session of this meeting. We're going to proceed to enclose. Um, so, thank you very much. Um, and I have already apologized, and I think the mayor has also already apologized uh, for the sound that was so bad at the beginning. But thank you very much for joining us on 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 the social platforms. The open.